You run into a lot of things on a cattle drive before you get where you're going. Stampedes, floods, sickness, drought. But one thing's with you all the time. You can't get away from it. You can't lick it. The same faces, day after day, week after week. You look at each other, nor you look at the cattle. After a while, you can't tell the difference. I'm getting that way myself. My name's Gil Favor, trail boss. when I do to a pair of fours. <laughs> Guess what I come up with? Oh, Ace is over four. I forgot I told you. Hey, Quince, when are you going to realize something? What's that? Good little man is no match for good big man. Uh, yeah, but did I ever tell you how much I won? Well, let's see. I think first time I heard it, it started out Fifty dollars. Then it was crowding three hundred. Another month, it'll be a thousand for sure. <laughs> Not a brush fire. No, and it ain't Indian smoke either. your house? It was. Where's everybody else? There's nobody else. You live here alone? My folks died this morning. Both of them together? Well, my father took sick about a month ago. And my mother got whatever it was, and they wouldn't eat. And I kept trying to feed them. And then this morning, when I walked in the room, it was all over. Where are they now? In there. Oh, I, I just, I, I couldn't bear him. Anyway, I figured what they had might be catching. It was the only thing I could think of to do. I understand, Miss... Uh... I'm Jenny Watson. Gil Favor, this is Pete Nolan. Howdy, ma'am. Are you the trail boss? How'd you know that? Well, you're on the Sedalia Trail, aren't you? We, we could see your, your dust all day yesterday. We figured I'm making a deal on our cattle. Well, we can take care of them, but... What about you? What are you going to do? Well, go up north, I guess. Any relatives, friends? No, just me. Can't let you try it alone. Guess you better come along with us. You know, I was hoping you'd ask me. I'm all ready to go. Oh, don't think I've forgotten about my folks. I, I haven't. It's just that I'm here, and, and they're gone, and... Well, they'd be happy to know that I'm not alone. Oh, there's just one thing I better warn you about. I, I won't hold you back, if that's what you mean. Oh, it, it wasn't that I was thinking about. Well, my trail hands, they... They haven't seen a woman for some time. Well, which are you worried about? Me or your men? Neither. Just want to let you know. 
Mind if I look at your gun for a second? Anything else on your mind? No, not that I can think of. Then I'll go gather my cattle. Shouldn't we bury them? Yeah, let's get at it. Now, that's her story. That's what's happened to her. I don't think anybody needs to ask any questions. Her name is Jenny Watson. You'll be riding along with us until we hit Silver Junction. Well? Nice to know you. Now, it just so happens we have some cows that could stand a little looking at, too. So let's get moving. I'll have Wishbone keep an eye on you. See a girl who can do man's work and look pretty doing it. Really? In these clothes? Well, uh, a woman starts thinking about her looks and she feels better, you know? Well, you talk like an expert. Yeah. <laughs> My dad taught me that saying. Isn't there anywhere we're going to stop near a town so I could buy a dress? Well, the next town is Silver Junction. That's a pay stop for the men. When do we get there? Well, in about three days. We'll camp outside of town, but I don't think Mr. Favorite mind if you rode in and did some shopping. In fact, uh, I'll ride along with you. If you'd like some company. I'd be delighted. Men seem to have perked up a little. At least they got something else to think about besides how bad the chow is. Could I get you some more? Oh, no, thank you. It's good, though. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, it's real good, Mushy. Well, I ain't always gonna be a cook's louse. I'm just doing it for a while to help out. Oh, he's gonna be a real gunslinger. Ain't that right, Mushy? Sure how fast you can draw, Mushy. Fast as grease lightning he is. Only trouble is he can't hit nothing. Well, I can hit. I plugged a coin the other day. Right through the middle. <laughs> you keep talking big. Someday somebody's gonna wonder just how good you are. I never said I'd go looking for trouble. Facing a man, it don't matter how many coins you can hit. You had much experience? Some. I don't mind him. He's sore at everything that breathes. How about dancing with an old man? Oh, come on. Do you good. <laughs> I 
guess I ain't as young as I thought I was. You take over, son. Come on, Rowdy. Don't mind you got two left feet. Go on, boy. <laughs> Not time to change partners. Yeah, I'll let you know when I'm through. I just told you, you're through. Well, you get another turn. Kind of short and sweet. Yeah. always gets the last dance. Kyle, a waltz. Excellent dancer, Mr. Favor. Now, if you'd only learn to smile a little bit. You're looking for my scalp, too? Isn't it enough you've got all the rest? That should make me angry, but it doesn't. Coming from you, it doesn't. Thank you for the dance, Miss Jenny. Thank you. Oh, tomorrow's a working day. Give them the bad news, Roddy. All right. Nighthawkers, eight to midnight, are uh, Quince and Scarlet. Midnight to four is Kyle and Arnold. Good night, Miss Jenny. Good night. It's been a pleasant evening. I've scouted a lot of trails. This is the first time I ever saw one turn into a dance hall on wheels. Why, you're just old-fashioned, Pete. It's the new way of doing things. You ain't gonna always be around when Dave and Rowdy get ready to tangle. I'll see you in the morning, boss. You can put all the daylight you want in each other after we get to Sedalia. Until then, the next man who starts anything finishes it with me. You get out of line again, you're through. It's all over. Break it up. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Favor. Uh, I guess you couldn't help it. I, I don't want you to think that I did anything to lead him on. Forget it. I guess you're sorry that I, I came along, aren't you? I will be, Jenny, if you don't let me get some sleep. Oh. Good night. Good night, Jenny. I'm sorry, boss. I, I just kind of went loco when that skunk Dave tried Forget to... it, Rodney. Forget it. She's a nice girl. I like her. I, I like her a lot. Right now, what I'd like is some sleep. Well, I don't mean the way Dave likes her. All right, Rowdy. You don't like her the way Dave likes her. Right. Well, I wanted to be all right with you, boss, if, if, if I talk to her. You know, so you'll know I'm not just shining up to her like the others. Well, what I'm trying to say is... I, I'm sort of serious about her. You want to name me one girl you see you're not serious about? I mean it this time. Well, I believe that. You always mean it. Uh, you don't understand. It's just that uh, this time it's a little more sudden than usual, isn't it? Maybe. 
If you got anything against her, boss, I don't want to hear about it. Oh, I got nothing against her, Ryan. Nothing. <laughs> you know, maybe you can do me a good turn. Like what? Well, sometime when you're talking to her, you'd sort of put in a good word for me. You, you were married once. You know how to talk to her, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I was married. Well, uh, I don't mean to get personal. No, that's all right, Rowdy. Well, I guess I better try and get some sleep. Talk to me. I thought last night scared them all away. They'll get over it. Not unless it's all right with you. Last night when you got angry, I understood why they call you Mr. Favor. They'll do the same for Roddy when he gets to be trail boss. You're just being modest. No, Roddy's a good man. He's a good boy. grass up ahead if we can make it before night. Yeah. Uh, I'll go take a look. What's your hurry? I thought last night taught you a lesson. I learned hard. Do you want me to tell Mr. Favor you've been annoying me again? I don't think you will. You might want to know where you were going or who you were going to meet way out here by yourself. Maybe you'd like to find out. Later. Get down. I said get down! <laughs> What's all this about? I couldn't help it, Blake. What happened? He just followed me. That's all. Is that all you have to say to me? Heard the shot, Blake. Bring him in, bury him. We got 
got along a lot better before we met up with her, when there was just the three of us. What's he want her around for? Remind me to have a long talk with you sometime. What about the others? Like you said, matter of fact, they, uh, they made quite a fuss over me. You liked that, didn't you? They treated me like a lady. You want me to treat you like a lady? Blake, don't be so touchy. What else do you find out, if anything? They get paid outside of Silver Junction. You sure it's outside? Mm -hmm. Paymaster's gonna ride out to meet him. That's what I thought. You want a favors crew? I think he's one of Mr. Favors' pets. Mr. Favor? Stop it. You think Mr. Favor will miss him? I guess so. Why don't you ask if Mr. Favor's gonna miss me? You're not gonna be away long enough for Mr. Favor to miss you. You'll make out all right. Don't worry. Make sure, huh? We're gonna be the richest brothers you ever knew. Richer even than some of those fellas you used to meet Saturday nights. They still wouldn't let you in. <laughs> you don't have to take that off the likes of her, even if she is your girl. You know, sometimes I wonder how a brother of mine can get to know so little about women. Hey, you're right about one thing without even knowing you're right. What's that? There's gonna be some killing on account of her. Whether Blake figures it or not, she's gonna get somebody killed. Somebody we didn't reckon to be killed. Maybe yourself, huh? Yeah, maybe. More likely, maybe not. sign of him anywhere, Mr. Favor. Oh, Dave can take care of himself. He's probably out there after strays. Who's got the night herd? Oh, uh, me, uh, Barton, and Wilbur. And keep an eye open. Don't want them moving around too much. They got nice full bellies. Don't want them losing that good tallow. They'll need every pound they can carry before we hit feeding country like this again. Say, uh, boss. Oh, what did she say when you talked to her? Say? Uh, yeah. Jenny. Oh, uh, she likes you fine. She says that? Look, Roddy, I got enough to do without playing matchmaker. Ask you yourself. I uh, haven't seen you all day. The herd stretches out for three miles. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was riding back and forth, sort of looking for you. Well, I saw you. You look busy. What'd you want? I just wanted to look at you and talk to you, maybe. Oh, that's nice. That's uh, very nice. Why not now? Well, um, I'm on night herd right now, so. Oh. Well, maybe later. Yeah. Yeah. Who is it? Hmm. 
me. What are you doing out here? Well, I... I couldn't sleep. Somebody bothering you? Oh, no, no. Nothing like that. Well, you better head on back. Mr. Favor might not like you wandering around out here in the middle of the night. Don't you ever get tired of thinking what Mr. Favor would like? Oh, he's the boss. In other words, you're afraid of him. No, I didn't say that. You don't have to. I'm sorry I bothered you, and it won't happen again. No, no, no. Oh, wait a minute. You make everything I say come out wrong. I, I'm just thinking of you. How would it look if anybody saw you out here? They'd think I liked you. Would they be right? You don't leave a girl any pride, do you? They sneak off from camp in the middle of the night just to see you. And all you do is just sit there and talk. night you you haven't spoken to me I was afraid that you thought it was my fault oh, no oh. let's go for by the trees somebody might see us well, I'm, I'm the cows can do without you for a little while trying for three days now to get up nerve to tell you how I feel about you. Why did you tell me? You talk to her real pretty. He talk like a nitwit. Get your senses back. I got your gun belt. Pay attention, lover boy. The party's over. But don't try that again. From now on, you're gonna do what I say, you hear? I hear. Good. Get back to your horse. That's the way it goes sometimes. Move. <laughs> Nice and natural now, huh?
It's me, boss. What's wrong? Put that gun down or I'll blow your head off. Either you do as I say or my brothers kill him and I'll kill you. Get up. Wake everybody up. Get them lined up over there without their guns. Everybody. Go ahead. You men will do what you say, no questions asked. In case it crosses your mind to be a hero, you might get away with it, but he won't. So you got a choice to make. They took me like a dumb kid. Shut up. What do you want? Just the payroll money you're gonna get. You've been on a trail a long time. Should be a big one. Learned a long time ago. Against a bad hand. Don't draw to an inside straight. You're a smart poker player. Too bad, lover boy. Get up. What's the matter, Mr. Favor? I'll tell you later. Leave it here. Huh? Leave it. Up and leave your gun belt here. That's the last of them. Search the wagons? Yes. All right, the drive will go on just like it was. You take orders in favor, and he'll take them from me. We can't keep an eye on all of you. We're not even going to try. We'll just stick with these two. Anybody tries to cut out and go for help, they won't be alive when you get back. Everybody understand that? He's saying the words. Hear him out. How many other night herders you got out? Two. You. Pass the word to them. Tell them to leave their guns out there when they come in. And tell them Mr. Fave will be right here with me. Beginning to see how it works? There's only one thing. Supposing one of them doesn't care what happens to me. What's to keep him from going for help? I'll tell you why they won't. Most any man would kill a man in a fight. If he was liquored up, or maybe even over a woman. But not one of them would kill in cold blood. That's where I got the edge. I would. And they know I would. I guess you would at that. Keep remembering it. We'll get along fine. <laughs> Jumper me, relax, you'll never make it. That uh, cabin back there where we found Jenny. Is there really anybody in it? Sure. Like she told you. But it wasn't her folks, was it? Yeah. Two men, two worthless old men. That sickness they died of, uh, lead poison? That's right. That fire was my idea, though. Work, too, huh? You always use women in your work? Yeah. Easier that way, less fuss. How else could three of us take over an outfit this big without somebody inside to set it up? Level Boy was a big help, though. I have to give him a bonus for that. Don't take it to hard, Ryder. You ain't the first man ever got fooled by a woman. I guess you won't be the last. I'd have staked my life she was on the level. Maybe you did. Three men taking over this whole outfit. How'd Mr. Favor let a thing like that happen? Well, I've been around a long time, and I never yet seen anybody with a smart answer for a 45 pointed down your ear. 
Nobody alive, that is. Well, what are we supposed to do? Just sit here and take it? Well, worse comes to worse, I got a sure way to get rid of them. How's that? Why, you do the cooking. Well, I'm serious. So am I. out from here and they wouldn't know I was gone. You know what would happen, Mr. Favor, if they found out, don't you? You think they'd do it? I wouldn't want to be the one to find out. Well, you got it all figured out pretty well. Except for one thing. What's that? What are you going to do once you get the money? What do you think we're going to do, hang around and get caught? With a woman along, you will be. Think so? Man keeps a woman around to help and not hinder. place just over that rise. Will the paymaster be there? I reckon not. Want me to ride into town and bring him back, boss? He'll find out we're here soon enough. You can see this dust for 20 miles. We'll make camp and wait for him. <laughs> Where are we going after we get the money? What do you care? I was just wondering. I'll let you know. She doesn't pay much attention to you and your brother, does she? She's Blake's girl. Hey, you don't like her, do you? That's none of your business. <laughs> it's a crying shame. What? I got a brother. Well, how it is when a woman moves in. You know, we had a ranch together. We used to split everything 50-50, right down the line. And he got married to this girl. Next thing I knew, a little funny business with the books. The ranch was all in his name. Now, Blake wouldn't double cross us. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought about my brother, too. Man sure can change when a woman gets her hooks into him. I didn't know Mr. Faber had a brother. He don't. Paymaster's coming, Mr. Favor. Stay out of sight. Good luck, kid. Hope you get to see some of that money. Ah, shut up. Kid, get up there with Jeb. Well, looks like we're about ready, huh, Favor? Did Blake tell you where we're going after we get the money? No, not yet. Seemed to you he's been acting different lately. What do you mean? Like when Jenny came along. She don't like us. She could be putting ideas in his head. Like what? Like maybe they don't want us around anymore. Splitting everything three ways. Maybe she wants him to keep all the money for himself. So he could spend more on her. And what put that idea in your head? Blake never tried to pull nothing on us. A man can change when a woman gets her hooks into him. You're using too much imagination. That ain't like you. Maybe. But I'm still gonna keep my eyes open. didn't believe me, huh? Don't talk like a fool. If they'd been tipped off, they wouldn't come riding in like that. What has he got soldiers with him for? How do I know? Because he's got a lot of money with him, I guess. Better be that. Just be sure you haven't got anything up your sleeve, mister. Yeah. Stick with Rowdy. If anything goes wrong, shoot him. You better be sure nobody got any bright ideas. All right, you man, let's get ready.
get here, draw your pay, and keep your mouth shut. I'll be right beside your boss. For extra insurance, my brother's with Rowdy. So handle yourselves real easy. I'm looking for Gil Faber. That's me. Got any identification? Uh, trail log. Anybody can carry a trail log. Well, ask around, mister. My men know me. I'll do better than that. This letter's from G. Favor, trail boss, asking about certain things. Now, if you wrote it, tell me how it's worded. Simple as I could make it. On or about this date, I expect to be 10 miles due north of your town. If I miss the date, keep trying. I won't be early, but I won't be more than eight days late. Signed a G favor. Underline the name. That's good enough for me. The bank sent me out with your money. As soon as you count it, you can sign the receipt. How come the escort? The Colonel's a friend of mine. Lots outlaws to be hanging around between here and town. I'm responsible for that money from the time I sign out of the bank till you put your name on the receipt. Sit down, lover boy. All I got left, Mr. Favor. You're taking a long time, boss. Get it over with. We want to get our hands on that spending money. Your tellies? Well, that makes it legal. Folks in town hope you let your men come in and spend some of it. Some of us will be in. <laughs> Good luck. Much obliged. Bag, Mr. Faber. You know, I'm only stealing from one man. By the time your men got through gambling, it'd all be in one man's pocket anyway. Yeah, now, that is one way of looking at it. Hey, Jeb. I'm, uh, I'm sorry it had to be you. 
was nice being treated like a lady. I hope someday you'll find a, a real one. Put it in my saddlebag. Why don't we divvy it up now? Because I said so. Well, maybe that ain't good enough. Jeb, you and Kid untie those horses and run them off five or six miles. What are you gonna be doing? What's got into you two? I ask you a question, Blake. Suppose you answer it. I'm gonna stay here and cover them till their horses are gone. Are you too stupid to figure that out for yourselves? Jenny gonna stay with you? She'll do whatever I tell her to do and stow with you. Now move. No. Put the money now. I'm splitting nothing now. Turn him loose, he'll weigh. everything I've done, I just couldn't pull the trigger. Well, uh, I'll tell him in town. Maybe it'll help. Well, I guess we'll be able to gamble away our money after all. It's sure hard to figure. She could have used that gun. If you didn't know better, you'd think she was the lady. She is. Well, um, let's gather them up and go into town. Now, next time you want to get Mr. Favor killed, just be sure this gun's loaded. In the low country, two inches of rain in half an hour. Coming through the passes, it was two feet of snow. On this side of the mountains, we had two brushes with rustlers, ended up burying two hands. Now it's been two days since grass and water. But my job's to kick this herd along no matter what. The only way I know to get a thing done is to keep trying. Gil Favor's my name, Trail Boss. <laughs> Been on this dead weed for three days now, Mr. Favor. We just lost so much beef, it seems like we only got half a herd left. Come grass and water, they'll be fat and sassy again in no time at all. What do we make since breakfast, Wishbone? Well, mushy only peels eight taters to the mile. I'd say we come four miles plus one spot. Mr. Favor! Be a hog to one more than that. Mighty pretty. Get Reston's land. Stay out if you ain't been asked in. Jed Reston's place over there. Help, 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 help. Bed down when you find water. I'll catch up. Roddy, be in this 
you're dressed in your Sunday clothes. You want to visit? Right. to the wagon. Five dollars for the job. Hold it! I want the pleasure, Pa. All yours, son. Wouldn't want you to lose on the deal, Banyan. You still deny you stole? I guess he's learned his lesson. Ten lashes never taught no man nothing. Try for 15. Maybe you'll tell where he hid that milch cow. I guess he's learned his lesson. Can't help admiring his stubbornness, though. My name's Favor. Jed Reston. Welcome to the Bar XL. This is Roddy Yates. What did he do, Mr. Reston? No need to pry into another man's business. Oh, he stole a milch cow. Only three milch cows on the whole range. Indian do with a milch cow. <laughs> he fancies himself a farmer. Can you imagine that? A Comanche aiming to farm? Oh, uh, this is my boy, Matt. Matt, shake hands with Rowdy Yates. And, uh... Gil Favor. I'm trail boss of a herd that's crossing your land right now. I passed your sign a ways back. I'm hoping you're asking me in. <laughs> you're a cattle man, ain't you? Of course you're in. I need a week, ten days grazing, maybe. My front gate is a hundred miles from my doorstep. You just pick out a likely range and make yourself at home. You'll be on my land no matter what direction you go in. Thanks. Except south, that is. South ain't my land anymore. Well, thanks again, Mr. Reston. Now, hold up, Mr. Favor. You boys been eating dust and alkali on the trail for quite a piece. We've got real beds here. Sweet water, shade trees, everything to ease the body. Much obliged, but I've got to get back to the herd. I understand. There's a real cattleman for you. But I think your steers would forgive you for sitting at a real table for one real meal. Hey, Banyan, show these gentlemen where to wash up, will you? This way. What do you think, Mr. Favor? I think that's a lot of horse. Get on him! Get on him! 
You gotta time it, boy. You gotta time it. I'm out of wind, Pa. Out of wind or out of nerve. This time, hold him. A lot of horse. I gave him the mat for his 21st birthday a week ago. Seven days, and he still hasn't been in the saddle. It'll take a heap of man to ride him. You ain't a heap of man after 21 years in this country. You ain't never gonna make it. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Men sometimes have a habit of expecting an awful lot from their sons. You're right. Guess I shouldn't expect too much. He was puny and sickly when he was born. You wouldn't think anyone so puny and sickly could kill a person. Mother died when he was born. <laughs> Well, don't stand around letting our guests get hungry. Take them over at the cookhouse. That horse is thunder on a hoof. Pa knows horse flesh. Matter of fact, there ain't nothing on four legs or two that Pa ain't got the hang of. Yeah? I'm pretty handy with Mustangs. Maybe I can help you break them. Nobody's breaking that stallion but me. Something wrong? Those milch cows. What about them? I'm not overeducated, but I can count to three. So? You can count to three. The Indian took 15 lashes for stealing one of three milch cows. They're all there. So what was the reason? Since when do you need a reason to whip an Indian? I guess we'll be riding, Roddy. Hey, ain't you guys supposed to chow? My stomach won't hold much food now. I figure your stomach won't take the facts of life. Hold it. All that loud drumming is just to show he's full growed. Let's get our horses. Your hands off of that coffee. But Wishbone, I want to make another pot of coffee. I remember your recipe. Yeah. Well, one pound of coffee in a pot, boil for 30 minutes, then pitch in a horseshoe, and if it sinks, add some more coffee. You open your mouth around here one more time, except to say, sir, I'm going to stuff it full of dynamite and light the fuse. But you'd be eating dinner tonight off a of fancy china plate. Why, we couldn't bear the thought of missing one of your meals, Wishbone. Pour Mr. Favor some coffee. Where's Pete? Yeah, he's out making a bedtime check. Any trouble? The only trouble I'm having is drinking this sorry coffee. Get out of the way, Mudgy. Oh, uh, boss, you're back. We get permission to cross this range? Rinson was as friendly as corn fritters. Speaking of corn fritters, if I eat any more of this beef, my belly's gonna sprout horns. I never seen an outfit where everybody's so full of smart alecky comments. Of course, I know you're all used to eating at them fancy French cafes in New Orleans. Well, if you don't like it, you can just give it back. Oh, it's good. It's real good, though. Reminds me, Mr. Favor, we're just about shed supplies. We'll pass the town ways back. Come morning, we'll go in. Uh, say, Pete, tell me about Comanches. They're mean. How mean? I'd say man for man, they've killed more whites than any other tribe. Comanche territory close by. Yeah, it's over south. The government's got them on a the reservation. You figure they could become farmers? 
farmers? What would they raise, scalps? Hey, Wishbone, give me another heart attack there. Still, it did not come. No. I will try tomorrow. That plow will get here one of these days. So? He's paid for it. And he's paid for the freight. He don't get the plow. I thought I married a human being. You think he really wants to farm? Sure. That's what the Comanches want us all to think. We've got to get over that kind of feeling. You want to be surrounded by Comanches? You figure you'd be able to sleep in your bed at night? That's Jed Reston talking. Did Jed Reston put an arrow in my arm? It's Jed Reston who don't want that plow delivered. You got two feet left. Stand on them. All right. All right. You willing not to eat? I'll stand up against Reston. In a minute, Billy. Be right back. Now, gentlemen, name your poison. Well, the candy stick. sale. I make it uh, $53 even. I can build rake. Seed I must buy. Fresh out of seed. I overlooked an item. A nickel's worth. Better not, mister. Nichols worth. Your funeral, mister. Takes two. I'll bet five hundred. I call and raise it a thousand. Well, it puts me on. You trying to run one? I call. Three jacks. Two pair. Two pair? I said three jacks. I lose. How do I stand now? Well, since the drive started, 
You're behind $68,430. How much is that in real money? Well, that tallies down to $1.17. That company. <laughs> Arrested. Guess he's come to check over the herd. Well, the way he's riding, he could trample the herd to death. Afternoon. Get off my range. Permission. You saw an Indian whipped on my ranch. You knew he was my enemy. Deny that you befriended him. I gave candy to a child. An Indian child. I can't tolerate ingratitude, Mr. Favor. That's exactly what you're guilty of. You making war on babies, Mr. Reston? Have your cattle off my range by nightfall. You said your front gate is 100 miles from your doorstep. I can't make that distance by nightfall. Three miles south is a Comanche reservation. You'll find good grazing there. By nightfall, if there's a steer on this range without the Bar XL brand, he gets shot where he stands. I still can't make it by nightfall. I've never been known as a cruel, unreasonable man. You've got an extra 24 hours before we start shooting your cattle. Let's go. Sure, hoping and reason with them Comanches. Ain't gonna be easy though with a couple of thousand doggies at his heels. You can come if you want. Sure thing. Why, you don't even know where. You can't just go riding into Comanche territory. Pete, you're the Indian expert. Tell him. Wishbone's right, Mr. Favor. You go riding in there, the odds are you don't come out. If we don't go in there, what'll happen when Reston starts shooting? You can always shoot back. No. For the right to graze, I figure we can butter a few beeves, maybe some flour and blankets. I'd like to come along. We're trading, not scouting. You nurse the herd. Reston's boundary marker. They get a weakness for signs. Pick up the coffee. We'll make like we've been asked in. Right. Put it away. They can just as easy put him in it. Ease off your gun belt. Thank you. 
Kuno. Ta slačka hagurare. Duko's way. Kao, Kao winning it. On in there. Go. My cattle are weak and hungry. They've got to rest. They've got to graze. He rest and had half of his land. He would still have more than enough. He ordered us away. We'll trade for the privilege we ask. Beef, flour, blankets, anything you need, we'll give. You offer friendship. That is enough. Bring your cattle. Probably burning off the feathers. My belly won't wait. Well, you're in luck. I found one hen naked. After that, apple pie. Apple pie? When are you going to grow up and stop being astonished at everything? Well, move the herd onto the reservation tonight. Is that all you got to say? No. Where's the gravy? You know, Indians sure do like beef. Just like white men. He's the other side of the hill. Okay, let's cut six head out of the bunch. I would like you to have them. It is not needed. I would feel better. My people will be grateful. Wagura wede. Baslach asked me to bring you to him. Will you come? Our pleasure. Welcome to my farm. Daslach is not asleep, but he dreams. Uh, the Kimachis will be nothing if they don't leave their old ways behind them. Well, if that isn't the prettiest pouch i ever seen. He made it for you. My son will keep yours for good luck. Now oh, I got me a pouch. Yeah, it's some job for one man. She said it helps. To be a fool is his wish. I will help. What's eating Reston that he doesn't understand? He wants our land. And someday he will get it. 
I will go now to find some grass for the cows you have brought us. Good and got you, Sarah. When I get plowed, this will be farmed. When he asks that you come to eat with us. Our pleasure. Juanilla has learned to cook with stove. Say, did you do these? Some. Some Chisera did. Chisera? Who'd have figured? When hot is finished, we will be ready for it. If it does not have the right taste, it is, it is because it is a new way with me. Oh, she's afraid it will not taste right. Hey, this is a good one, eh? We got a cook named Wishbone. I sure take lessons from you. <laughs> Ah, this is for the boy. Uh, he is not yet of age to eat with elders. Come, boy. Tazlach is a good man. Tell that by looking around the place. It is hard for people to believe a Comanche would choose peace to fighting. They, they do not know Tazlach. Well, now it is not much of farm. But when I get plow, I show them Indian can farm. It's my guess you'll be a good farmer. Now, come on, let's eat. like the men are getting fatter than the cows. Well, they could use a little thinning down. As for the herd, they're about as fat as they're gonna get. Well, let's get moving before we forget the taste of dust. All right, I'll get them ready. All right, finish your town saddle up. We're moving on. I'm riding to Tuss Lutch's farm to say goodbye. You can saddle two horses if you want. Right. You can finish your coffee first. Welcome. Morning, Button. What's the matter? Tazlach has been insulted, and the boy blames everyone. Who insulted Tazlach? The town. They will not give him the plow. Where is he? The hate is still there. They put up sign. No Indians allowed. They have a weakness for signs. It is their town, but it is my plow. Here is the paper. I asked them, give me plow. They fire a rifle to drive me away. I'll get your plow for you. Comanche, get my plow. Chisera gone to gather braves. That's a fool's play. Reston will have reason to call soldiers. Reston can't want anything that bad. Uh. It is hard to say. Chisira right? I wrong? I'll go see Reston. No, it is not your trouble. Cattle are ready for trail. Don't be foolish. Go. After I do a chore, when a man like Reston wants killing, there is nothing to do but give him killing. Nobody has to move in the direction Reston's pushing. Right back to the camp, Rowdy. See that the supply wagon is stripped down. We may have to do some hauling. Oh, 
Well, Mr. Traver, you've done what no other white man has ever been able to do. Get something out of the Comanches. One hand washes the other. Do something for them, they'll do something for you. I got no candy for an Indian. You got a plow. Won't be much to give up, since it doesn't belong to you. It's the townspeople that won't give it up. You pull the strings and they jump. Look at it this way, Mr. Favor. Ever since I can remember, the land of the South belonged to my family. After the war, the politicians in Washington gave it to the Comanches. But before you can remember, the land belonged to them. I aim to move the Comanches out of there. You don't think they'd go someplace else if they've got farms? Chisera's coming in with everything he's got in back of him. They're going after the town. You can stop it. You give me credit for more power than I own. I'm giving you credit for the killing that'll be. Maybe he's right, Pa. When you master that stallion, then you can enter the men's council. In the meantime, keep your mouth shut. Mr. Favor, you take a hint awful hard. How many times do you have to be told that you're not welcome on this rain? Worth the try. The wagon's just about ready. I hope you know what you're up to. Commands has been pouring through here all day long. Finish it in the team. Right. I allow myself the privilege of calling you a fool just once a drive, boss. This is that once. Herd will never be primer than they are right now. I know. It ain't sense to get worked into an Indian war when you can get around it. Now, if we take off now, we could be sitting in a snug hotel come the finish of the drive. I'd like that. If I could sit in that snug hotel and not remember back to this time, I'd do it. Ready, Mr. Favor? <laughs> That's right. We're taking delivery for a friend. Well, it ain't come yet. Sure. That thing outside's a cotton gin. Yeah, it belongs to somebody else. Maybe so. Show me an order from somebody else. It belongs to the Indian. sale showing ownership. You gonna let them load up that plow? You know what this will mean? We take this thing with us. You won't have a couple thousand Comanches on your necks. We can't afford to go against Reston. That's right. Reston's spread gives us all a living. How long are you gonna live on your knees? We gonna take that from him? He's saying the truth. You're fools. Reston needs you as much as you need him. Maybe we just ain't big enough to take the chance he don't. 
A man doesn't know how big a shadow he throws until he stands up. Open up. What's more important, Jed Reston or your town? Let us deliver this, and your town won't be wiped out by Comanches. Or you can shoot us in the back and make Reston happy. that stallion. He took off. He couldn't control him. That any reason to do this? He took him into the reservation. Banyan tracked him here. They drove him off with guns. The Comanches have got Matt. Get the plow. I'm gonna give you one more chance to interfere, Mr. Favor. I just sent his squaw and papoose to Casara to tell him something. If Matt isn't back by noon tomorrow, I'm gonna hang him on Main Street. Let's go. Did we lose? Everything. Water's over here. Sarah is telling the truth. He then. is. And Comanche rifle fire must have drove off Banyan when he was tracking that stallion. If Chisera said Matt isn't a Comanche captive, then he isn't. Son of Reston has been found. Where's my horse? I gotta ride him. We will find your horse. Lie still and rest. Lie, lie still. Why don't we just drag him into town and set Tashlitz free? It's Jasera's play. Let him make it. Seems to me one E would nurse made a resting with a tomahawk. found you hurt. The stallion threw me. Your father's going to hang Toslach unless he sees you by noon. Why? He thinks you're a Comanche captive. Well, give me your horse. I'll stop it. Only the Comanches can stop it. Well, he, my father said if I came in by noon. Your father is a liar. The Reston's a man of honor. Your father has no honor. He will hang Toslach. This will start a war. He will get our land. You're just looking for an excuse to kill me. We will kill only one man for the death of Taslach. Jet Reston. 
Only those who stand in the way will also die. Nagire. Go. Turn him loose for. If he goes in without Comanches, maybe Reston will give up Taslach. We'll go after him just to make sure. Come on, Raul, let's pick up our horses. <laughs> it's only three hours to noon. Oh, Reston's just trying to throw a little scare in everybody. You all right? No sense waiting till noon. Let's hang him now. Papa, I'm all right. Those redskins got to be taught a lesson. I was hurt. They took care of me. You said if I got in by noon. Never mind what I said. The rest is the men of honor. What can I do? We'll back you. Then maybe they will. Can't do this, Mr. Reston. Shut up. No, Pa. Matt, you disappointed your Pa. You came back alive. You've got to turn him loose, Pa. Don't be stupid. He's land hungry. You'd rather see his own son dead and lose a chance to spread his boundary markers. You're digging your own grave with your mouth, Mr. Favor. Any man interferes and he gets cut down. Ask him. Go ahead, ask him if he wouldn't rather see you dead than lose an acre. I warned you. Pa, let the Indian go. No. You'll never get another chance like this. Cause an Indian war, soldiers come in, kill a lot of people. But Jed Reston will get more land. Shut up. Take a good look, Matt. That's the image you wanted to mold yourself into. A liar, a cheat, fake. That's enough. He's right. You wanted me dead. Well, here's your chance. Are you going against me? Why not? You've been against me all my life. That's not true, Matt. I tried. I'm ashamed to be a Reston. Don't say that. Come with us if you want. No, thanks, Mr. Favor. I'd rather be on my own for a while. Never will I forget my two friends. I'm sorry your dream didn't pan out. It will, someday, maybe. Thank you. 
Found this thing rusting away in a pasture somewhere. Ain't doing us any good. You as a friend? Come on. The Indian's sitting here. Makes some folks kind of nervous. I had to take him out of the other car. He was scaring a couple of old ladies. But he's with me. No harm at all, I promise you. Well, I sure don't mind if he don't. That's fine, fine. Now, just stay put now. I'll be up in the smoker. Thank you. Hmm? I am grateful for your acceptance to travel to strange, far places is difficult when one is without his loved ones. Yes, I know what you mean. anyway, a celebration or a funeral? What are we celebrating? Well, a pocket full of money, a month with nothing to do, and nine more saloons we haven't been in yet. <laughs> well, nine saloons will take care of the money. We'll still have a month with nothing to do. Senor Pete, uh, I do not think I can last for even one more. <laughs> Grover than just pushing babes around. <laughs> All right, so it isn't a celebration, but why is it a funeral? There ain't no funeral. Well, then why is everybody so... Oh, I get it. It's the boss. Mr. Favor isn't here to lead you around by the hand. His little boys are afraid to go out alone. Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Begrudging a man a chance to have a vacation and see his kids. You've been drinking anyway. Whatever it is, I think you need a couple more. Now eat the glass this time, will you? Uh, Mr. Rowdy! Mr. Rowdy! Mr. Rowdy, I think you better take this. What is it? It's a telegraph from Mr. Favor. Mr. Favor? Well, I was passing by his telegraph office, and I heard this fellow talking to a couple drovers, and he was asking him if he knew a trail boss named Mr. Favor. Uh. So, of course, I said, I guess I did. So the next thing I knew, he shoved us in my hand. 
Well, why didn't you tell him Mr. Favor is out of town? Well, you didn't give me a chance, Mr. Nolan. What am I supposed to do with it? You can't deliver it, that's for certain. Well, it might be business. Mr. Favor left you in charge. Yeah, well, supposing it ain't. Only one way to find out. Oh, yeah. That's his sister-in-law. That's where the kids are staying. Your visit would not be right at present time. Would upset children. Strongly urge you not to come. Letter follows Eleanor. Oh, no, no. Letter follows Eleanor. Oh, well. Bartender! You have not enough room. Oh, no, no, it's not that. It's just these city clothes. The discomforts of civilization. And it takes some getting used to again. You have been gone a long time. <laughs> Is it that obvious? The signs are plain. The face that has felt many suns. The eyes that seek. The horizon, a man of the open fields. Maybe too much so. I'm almost forgotten there is another way to live. Home, family, neighbors. So you return for good? Oh, no, just a visit. See my two daughters. My wife died a few years ago. They've been staying with an aunt in Philadelphia. Philadelphia? The great city of the East? One of them. You can tell me of it? Not too much to tell. A lot of people, a lot of buildings. Why, are you going there? Among the other cities. It will be very strange. I have never seen such a place before. We can start out even. I'm sure the people of Philadelphia have never seen anyone like you either. That is what the Colonel said. Why he asked me to come with him. The Colonel? Colonel Summers, he has what he calls a Wild West show. I am to be part of it. Doing what? Right. Show my skill with the lance and the bow. Let the people of the East see a true chief of the Pawnee. You think this is wrong? No, I, I couldn't say. The year has been hard for my people. The winter was bitter. There is much hunger and sickness. Colonel Summers offered much money. It meant food, seed, grain, a chance to begin again. Of course, then, you're doing a fine thing. May it be the right thing. To go so far, to such a strange place, it is almost frightening. I trust we shall both find a friendly welcome and a rewarding visit. Anybody to call me Maggie. I've always called you that. 
Don't remember me, huh? No. And my Aunt Eleanor says I should never talk to strangers. She's absolutely right. But I'm not exactly a stranger. Honest. I'm your father. Well? You don't look like my daddy. It's been a long time. But I saw his picture. He sent it last Christmas. Well, then. He had a big hat and boots, and he wore an apron on both of his legs. That's my working clothes. I got all dressed up to come to see you. You're really my daddy? Honest and truly? Honest and truly. Margaret! What are you doing, child? I've told you never to speak to strangers. It's Daddy, Aunt Eleanor. It's Daddy. Gil. Hello, Eleanor. It's good to see you again. And you, but... You were expecting me, weren't you? You, you got my letter. Oh, yes, yes. But didn't you get my wire? Well, no. Is anything wrong? Not exactly. It's just that... Gillian's sick again. Margaret. Sick? It's nothing serious. She's always sick. Will you be still, Margaret? I'm sorry, Gil. This isn't a very gracious welcome. What about Gillian? Where is she? She's in her room. There's nothing to worry about, really. I'll explain after you've seen her. Oh, no, Margaret, you stay outside. Why? Well, you know how upset Gillian gets when she has too much company. Besides, you should give her a chance to say hello to her father. But he's my father, too. I'll tell you what. You see this bundle? Presents? Yeah, for you and Gillian. Now, why don't you sort them out and divide them into things that you like and things you think she'd like, huh? Sure. You haven't lost your way with women. At least not at that age. Gillian? Yes, Aunt Eleanor? Yes. Feeling better, dear? A little. Good. I have a wonderful surprise for you. Look who's here. Gillian, honey. Sorry to hear you're not feeling well. I'll be all right. Sure you will. We've got a lot to do. We're gonna have a fine time together. That's nice. So you hurry up and get well now, here? Yeah? I'll try. It's been such a long time, honey. Got a lot of catching up to do. And Eleanor? Yes, dear. Will you fix my pillows? I want to lie down now. Here, let me do it. Been a long time since I've had a chance to fuss over my girl. How about that? Fine, thank you. Rest up now. I'll, I'll be in to see you later. All right. I'll bring your supper in a few minutes, dear. And Eleanor? Yes, dear. I'll be right with you, Bill. Eleanor, maybe you'd better let me have it straight. What's wrong? It's nothing serious, Gil, believe me. She just happens to be a delicate child. I'm not and... talking about that. It seems that she doesn't want me here, even that she's afraid of me. Well, that's why I sent you the wire. I, I was afraid this would happen. But why? Is it something I've done? Maybe it's something you haven't done. Maggie! Maggie, what do you think you're doing? Just showing Gillian some of our presents. Yeah. Well, maybe you'd better climb down now. Gillian that way. Sure, I know. She's no fun anymore. She never wants to play. She's always sick. Does she like to be sick, Daddy? Well, nobody really likes to be sick, honey. I bet she does. I don't feel well. I have to lie down. She's a sissy. 
Oh, you won't remember it because you're too young. But she was a real tomboy once, even wilder than you. She used to be fighting with all the boys in school, and when we went riding, she always wanted to race. Riding? A real horse? Her own pinto. I wish I could ride a horse, but Aunt Eleanor won't let me. Why not? Oh, she's afraid we'll fall off. Margaret. Your supper's ready, dear. Go in and wash up now. Yes, Aunt Eleanor. And leave that awful thing outside. Oh, it's not real. I mean, it was, but it's just a skin. Daddy says I can make a belt out of it. We'll discuss that later. Yes, Aunt Eleanor. I'll hurry. Will you wait for me, Daddy? Of course I will. Maybe it isn't important, but we always call her Margaret. Maggie just seems more fitting somehow. Perhaps. But names stick, and it wouldn't be appropriate for a young lady. Any more than an Indian bonnet and war paint? Frankly, no. This is Philadelphia, Gil. Children are raised differently here. So I notice. You asked me to take care of them. I feel as though I have the right to bring them up as I see fit. Of course you do. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I'm not looking for appreciation. I couldn't love them anymore if they were my own. What are we fighting about, Eleanor? I didn't realize we were. You don't want me here, do you? Only because of Gillian. Do you know the last time she got sick? When I told her you were coming. Do you know what she said to me upstairs? She was afraid you were going to take her back with you. Why should she be afraid of me? I'm her father. In name only. It's been more than two years. You're a stranger now. I've kept in touch. All the letters and presents in the world won't make up for one goodnight kiss. What are you trying to say? You have to decide, Gil, to be a real father or someone who just brings presents. You know I can't take them back. I, I'm not prepared to take care of two little girls. Not in Texas, obviously. Aunt Eleanor, Gillian's calling you. Tell her I'll be right up. I'll fix up the bedroom for you. Tight with the left hand, pull the arrow with those fingers, now sight along the arrow, and pull it back as far as you can. Steady now. Let it go. I did it! I did it! Gillian, did you see? Good. Hey, Gillian, how about you taking a try at it? Yeah, come on, Gillian. It's fun. Well, all right. Hold the bow in the left hand. Now. There. Draw back slowly and... Gillian, what on earth are you doing? No, well, I'm just showing them how to protect themselves from Indians. And I hit the target. This is hardly the sort of thing to do in the house, Gil. Sorry, I didn't stop to think. And you girls were supposed to be practicing. Mm. Do Indians play the piano, Daddy? No, but then they don't play music as pretty as you do either. Really, Gil, you're, you're worse than the children. Let's see if we can't find something special. I think this is a real treat. Hey, how about this? A Wild West show? What's that? Something like a circus, only Western style. With wild animals and Indians, too? Oh, sure. Look right here. Ogulla, chief of the Pawnee tribe. Matter of fact, I know him personally. You do? I don't believe it. Why not? He didn't scalp you. <laughs> Indians aren't that savage. In their own way, they're just as civilized as we are, if not more so. 
And they don't kill people and burn down their houses? Oh, sure, there's a few bad people in every race, but Lincolns are humans, just like you. Different way of life, maybe, but underneath, just the same. Indian brave is like me, Indian children are like you. And a squaw is like Aunt Eleanor? Uh, yeah, well, sort of. Do they do the same things we do? Of course. Men work, women take care of their families, children learn and play. Games? Mm-hmm. What kind? Well, let's see. Come on, here. You lie down on the floor facing me. There, like this. Now, put your arm up, take hold of my hand, like that. There. Now, this is called Indian wrestling. The idea is to force the other person's hand down to the floor like that. Oh, that's not fair. You're bigger. All right. You use both hands. Right. You ready? Go. Go on, <laughs> Margaret. Push it down. I can't. Ooh. Try harder. Well, come help me. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh, <man. laughs> oh, Mark. Gillian, what are you doing? Daddy's showing us a new game. Mm -hmm. Look at you all hot and perspiring. But I feel all right. Well, you won't if you keep this up. Now, I want you to sit quietly or I'll have to put you back to bed. Yes, Anna. You too, Margaret. Really, Gil, I should think you'd know better. Good as you, Gillian. Remember when we rode together? Say, how would you like to try again? I don't think I'd better. Oh, just up and down the street a little. All right. Maggie? Oh, wait, I can't. My dress is too long. Pull it up like I did. You're wearing bloomers. I think you can manage. All right. Remember how to hold the reins now, firmly, not too tight. Scared? No. We'll take it nice and easy. Gil, wait! Look at Gillian, Aunt Eleanor. Gil, no, it isn't safe. Gillian's been riding before. Come on, Gillian. It's all right. That's it. Settle down. Settle down. Gillian! It's all right, Eleanor. Nothing wrong. Nothing's wrong. She might have been killed. Come on, darling. I'll take you back. Not yet. The dog just frightened the horse and made him shy. She dropped the reins. The horse didn't know what to do. Nobody was giving him any orders, so he just went off on his own. Gil, this is no time for... Please, for... Eleanor. A horse needs a firm hand. There's nothing to be frightened of as long as you've got control of it. You understand that? Let's finish our ride then. Yes, Daddy. Is this why you came, Gil? To destroy everything I've tried to do? Now, Eleanor, you know better than that. I only know you've succeeded in wrecking a happy, orderly household. You've made a roughneck out of Margaret, and you've endangered Gillian's health. There doesn't seem to be anything really wrong with her health. Have you been taking care of her the past two years? Have you sat up nights with her, nursed her, tended her hand and foot? Have you tried not tending them? I mean, kids are pretty smart. They catch on real quick the easiest way to get what they want. 
So I haven't done a good job. I didn't say that. Well, you're certainly trying to prove it. Eleanor, you're putting me in a bad spot. I realize how much you've done for them, how much you love them. I can't repay that. Oh, I'm not looking for repayment, Gil. I, I'm just trying to bring them up the best way I know how. Fine, but isn't there some room for some fun in their life? I'm, I mean, hang it all. Do you expect me to stand still when I see something's wrong? Well, since it's that wrong, I suggest you make other arrangements. Other arrangements? Take them back with you. Bring them up your way. Wait a minute. You're their father. It's your right. Go on. Take them back to your, to your horses and cattle and cowboys and Indians. I can't do that. Well, that's one problem you'll have to decide for yourself. I'm leaving. Leaving? I'll visit some friends. You can stay here until you make up your mind. At least I'll know the children will have a decent home. Daddy. I didn't mean to make her mad. Hey, no, it's not your fault. Don't you worry about it. But you won't go away now, will you, Daddy? You won't leave us. No, honey. Of course not. Pushed those steers all night long. Next morning when the storm hit, they were all safe on high ground. Good. I wish I could see a cattle drive sometime. Well, you will sometime, when you're a little bit older. Right now, it's time for bed. Daddy? It really hasn't been so awful, has it? What? Being here with us. I mean, you don't wish you were back in Texas, do you? Oh, no, of course not. Well, I do. Maggie! With us. <laughs> Sounds like company. You two get on up to bed now. Excuse me, is there a Mr. Favor? Please Hi. phone. Hey! hey. <laughs> you no good saddle trash. Good to see you. Come on. I wish you'd been that glad back on the drive sometime. What are you doing here? Well, we get this telegram saying for you not to come to Philadelphia, and then we get one from you saying you're going to stay here. Yeah, when you said you weren't coming back and for Ryder to handle the next drive, we figured you must be in kind of hot water. Yeah, well, sort of. I'll tell you about it. Oh, girls, come on in here. I want you to meet my daughters. Gillian, Maggie, there's Pete Nolan and Wishbone. You heard me tell about them. Miss Gillian, ladies. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> uh, boss's daughter's all right. <laughs> Mind you two get up to bed now. I'll be up in a few minutes to tuck you in. <laughs> nice kids. Yeah, that's part of the trouble. Sit down, make yourselves comfortable. Are you in some kind of trouble here? Well, not exactly. Uh, no, he's going into the whole story. It's just that I've got to stay here and take care of the girls. Well, what about your sister-in-law? Uh, we had a disagreement. And she left him with me. The kids can always grow up in Texas. What, a cattle drive? Oh, Pete, not girls. Particularly not the way they've been raised. I couldn't just yank them out of this kind of a life. Not now. And what can you do here? I'll find a job. What kind of a job? Oh, I don't know. I haven't had too much chance to look around. I've been too busy with the girls. Well, we wondered what we was going to do in Philadelphia. What do you mean by that? We're going to stay here and take care of things while you find yourself a job. Wait a minute. Now, no arguments. It's all settled. Look, you've got to get back to the herd. Roddy and the crew's going to need you. There's time. We'll get back all right. After we see that you're bedded down properly. Oh, you're crazy. What do you know about taking care of little girls? Can't be any rougher than riding herd on a bunch of beeves. That's right. Come on, I'll show you where you bunk. Hey, huh? I'd have brought my saddle blankets, but I didn't think you'd want me sleeping in the yard.
horse is herding beeves. Some horse. You was mine, I'd put you out of your misery. Anything in the morning paper? No. A couple things I might be able to do. One thing sure, they don't need a trail boss in Philadelphia. Any kind of a cattleman, for that matter. I really bought myself something this time. Well, why don't you have a talk with your sister-in-law? Kind of heart to heart. Well, she was pretty mad when she left here. She can be real stubborn. Well, that runs in the family. Oh, I didn't ask for this wish. She, she, she wasn't handling the girls right. So you barge in like an ox and upset the whole shebang. No, I tried to work things out. Like a trail boss, I'll bet. Well, it seems to me there must be something pretty decent about her or she wouldn't leave you in the house like this. Of course there is. She's a fine woman. She loves the girls, but... Oh, you wouldn't understand. Daddy, Daddy, come quick! What's wrong? A parade with horses and wagons and real cowboys! <laughs> You're going to take us to see, Daddy? That's right. There's the Colonel himself. Make you a homesick wish? Oh, I don't know. I'd stack Quince and Scarlet against these dudes any time. There he is. There's the Indian. Is he the one you know, Daddy? Yeah. Ogala, guilt favor from the train. Go on, get back. If you want to talk to him, you'll have to buy a ticket. See you, was Get it. We we're friendly on the train. He said he was going to perform in the show, riding and shooting. Nothing like that. The Pawnees are proud people. I can't figure a chief taking part in a sideshow stunt like that. Mm. You saw him, didn't you? See, and ain't always believing. yet. Show ain't until tonight. We want to see Colonel Summers on business. Oh. Fourth wagon down on the right. come to laugh and mock. I just want to get things straight. On the train, you said you were going to be in the show. Is this what you meant? To be treated like an animal. To stand in shame before the whites. To bring disgrace upon myself and my people. I would rather have been dragged by wild horses. Well, what do you do it for? Colonel Summers says this is what the people of the East believe a pawnee to be. This is what they wish to see. Didn't have to go along with him. Colonel Summers has many men. I am but one. These are not only for the show. He's keeping you prisoner? It will not be forever. And then Colonel Summers will pay. All of the whites will pay. 
My people and I will wash this insult with your blood. You want to see me? You apparently went to the wrong wagon, friend. No, we found the right one. I've seen you before. On the train coming east. Oh, yes. Only then you treated Ogala like a human. Oh, this is part of the act. That's what I'm paying him for. It's not the way I hear it. Now, you wouldn't take the word of an Indian for anything, would you? Against yours any time. What do you want, Favor? Let him go. You got no right to hold him. I have a contract. He has his money. Now he's got to deliver. He wasn't paid for this. He's being paid to perform. And he's performing the way I want. All right. The law will have something to say about this. Not much. Contract's legal. Slavery is. If that's all you came to see me about, friend, goodbye. We'll be back. Anytime. Come to the show tonight. See what a big attraction the Indian is. Why folks get so excited sometimes, they even throw things at them. You me. That way out. Mr. Favor in? Well, no, but he should be back any minute. Well, I'm I'm Eleanor Bradley, Mr. Favor's sister-in-law. Oh, well, sure. Come on in. I'm Wishbone, Mr. Favor's cook. Say, that's a mighty fine stove you got back there. I don't often get a chance at one's good enough to bake cake. Are the children here? Sure, you want to see them? Please. Hey, you ladies, come on down here. Somebody to see you. Be right there, Wishbone. Uh, you want to come in and sit down? Thank you. Are the, the children well? Oh, fine, fine. Not a healthier pair of fillies anywhere. I'm glad. Uh, of course, they miss you. They do. Well, being bossed by their paws, one thing, but, well, girls need a woman's hand, don't you think? Well, I used to think so, but I'm beginning to wonder. Gil certainly doesn't feel that... Oh, well, don't pay him any mind. Well, he's so used to bossing men and cattle, he don't know how to talk to a woman anymore. Uh, it doesn't mean half what he says. I said some pretty awful things myself. I I wanted to see Gil and try to explain that. Aunt Eleanor! Oh, Gillian, I've missed you so. <gasps> Me too. You're feeling all right, darling. I haven't been sick once. <laughs> Aunt Eleanor! Oh, Margaret, so good to see you. You look wonderful, darling. Your father must be treating you very well. Oh, yes. We have lots of fun and we play all kinds of games. Margaret, that isn't a real gun, is it? Sure it is. And your father let you play with it? Now, wait a minute. You got no business with that. Where'd you get it anyway? From Pete's room. You mean Gil actually allows a gun in the house? Well, he... Now, give me that. You got no business with it anyway. Why not? Well, because it isn't any toy. Now, hand it over. No! Don't ever point it at anybody! Now, just hold it right there. I'll take it. Real easy. Oh, well, now, don't get any wrong ideas, ma'am. Why, this is all a mistake. Obviously. And I'm the one who's made it. Did I do something wrong? Wrong? Didn't anybody ever tell you guns are dangerous? Well, nobody ought to fool around with these things. Almost anything can say... <laughs> See what I mean? I never thought I'd see the day when Gil Favor takes up the lion down. What are you talking about? Where is he? Been off the hack, I guess. Take what lay him down? Pete. Pete, you've got to be reasonable. Well, what's going on? Oh, Pete's just being pig-headed. At least I'm not afraid of a fight. 
Well, somebody simmer down and tell me what's going on. Well, they got that Indian chained up like a slave, like a wild animal. He won't do anything to set him free. I'm doing everything I can. Yeah. The police, a lawyer, now that's a big help, isn't it? Well, it's the only way. The lawyer will draw up a complaint and get a subpoena. Then the police can follow up with charges. In the meantime, the Indian sits there and rots. And what good is it going to do for you to both be in jail when all you got to do is wait a few days? A few hours is too much. I oh, wish. Will you pound some sense into him? Well, it don't seem right to just leave him there if we can help him. And we can. Oh, sure. Gun you in and blast him out? Can't you get it through your thick head? This isn't Texas. It's Philadelphia. Yeah, and you're beginning to fit in pretty good. Maybe it's just as well you're staying here, because I never want to work for you again. Oh, uh... Well, you had a caller. Oh? Huh? Yeah, your sister-in-law came. What you want? Uh, well, I don't know. She waited and then put the children to bed, and she left said she'd be back in the morning. What's this all about? Oh, I don't know. I'm not so sure this is a good idea. I didn't ask you to go home. Well, somebody's got to be sure you don't get your head blown off. Where are you going? You're going to see a sick friend. Yeah, he's sick. Real sick. Don't tell your father. No, you don't want to worry your daddy, do you? No. All right, go on back up to bed. All right. All right. Well, please. What are you doing up and around at this hour? We were thirsty. We went to get a drink. Both of you? At the same time? Well, I was awfully thirsty, Daddy. All right, come on. Let's get to bed. Wishbone and Pete. Come on, something's going on here. I'd better know about it. Well, they went to see a sick friend. Sick friend? But they didn't want you to worry. And you don't have to, Daddy. They'll be all right. Pete took his gun with him. Oh, no. Do you know where your Aunt Eleanor's staying? At Mrs. Perkins. Where does she live? Down that way. Where down there? Do you know the address? Uh, Prospect Street, 925. 925 Prospect. Do you mind staying alone for a little bit? I have to go out. It's it's important. Can we stay up and keep the light on? Yeah, sure. Come on, Gillian. I'll get in your bed and you can tell me some ghost stories. What are you doing here? I need your help, Ellen. You need my help? something wrong with the children? Oh, no, no, they're fine, but I'll have to leave them alone for a little bit. Could you go over there? I'm surprised you're that concerned. Eleanor, there's not time to explain. Could you stay with them? Of course. Thanks, Eleanor. <laughs> It's a good thing I wasn't. Where's Pete? Well, uh, never mind. I can guess. You shouldn't have left the kids alone. You got any clothes for O'Galley? He can't run through Philadelphia in a loincloth. Well, no. Uh, I thought so. Here, take these. Look, you'd better stick with Pete. 
keep them out of trouble, at least until they get out of civilization. You're going to need some more money. Oh, no, we got money. It's a long, rough trip. You can't take any trains or stagecoaches. Everybody from here to Texas is going to be looking for you. Somebody's coming. Tell Pete to hold up. Someone's coming. They'll cover. We'd better draw them off. For someone trying to dodge trouble, you got a funny way of showing it. Hey, let's really give them something to keep them busy. Try and slow them up a bit. They've got the Indians! job you were looking for? They could use a good horse wrangler. <laughs> Look, you better get moving to catch up with Pete. I'll get back to the kids. Yeah. Give him a big hug for me. All right, now, this is the way Daddy showed me. Make sure that the colored feather's on the outside. Now pull back and let go. Good. Can I try? Sure. All right, now, hold it firm. On pull this back, side? yes, with a red feather right. on the outside. All right, now, you try it. I wouldn't have known Gillian when I came over last night. Do you know how she met me? Sliding down the banister? <laughs> it was so good to see her active and laughing again. I guess I have been overprotecting them, Gil, but the way we've been living without a man around the house... Well, I didn't have to barrel in here and find the one thing wrong and not mention everything else that you've done so right. Well, it gets pretty frightening sometimes. When they're not your own, somehow you feel... The responsibility even more. I could have taken the time to find that out. Eleanor, the reason I left them with you in the first place is because I trusted you and your love for them. I still do. You remember that while I'm away? I have the feeling they'll grow up in spite of us. <laughs> Sorry about your disagreement with Mr. Nolan. Pete and I have had disagreements before. Couldn't take a chance on him bringing Ogala here. I didn't want to involve you with the children in summers. But will they get away? Oh, I sent Wishbone after them. He'll keep them out of trouble. Well, girls? Do you really have to go, Daddy? The sooner I get back to work, the sooner we can be together. But when will we see you again? I hope it won't be too long. See, maybe come this summer we can talk your Aunt Eleanor into seeing what folks in Texas live like. Will you, Aunt Eleanor? Will you? It sounds like a wonderful idea. We'll all look forward to it. Goodbye, Eleanor. 
Thanks. Thank you, Gil. Just remember, no matter how long it is or how far apart we are, when you love someone, you're always with them. I showed you how to work that thing once, I'm not gonna show you again. Mr. Wishbone. Whatever it is, it's not worth aggravating me about. What it is, is Santa Claus. It's what? I think Santa Claus is gonna come over and talk to us. Santa Claus. Yes, sir. In the middle of August, in the middle of Texas. Well, that's what them bells are. Howdy, sir. Hello, son. Howdy. Howdy. I I wonder if you gentlemen could give me a hand, John. I don't know. I'm I believe I'm I'm lost. Come on, don't just sit there, you know. Go get down and help him. Figure he got so far south, Mr. Wishbone. Ah. Well, he isn't dead, is he? How you feel? Oh, terrible. Terrible. You kind of scared us the way you keeled over like that. Oh, me too. Too much sun. I've been out looking for the wagon ever since breakfast. You see, my, my wife and my boy and, and me, we were on our way to New York. It's, Just, just no, simmer down. Look, I promise that I'd be right back, and they'll be worried. Well, they'll be a dang sight more worried if I have to drag you in on a slab. Yes, I, I like the way you state your problem there, brother. That's yeah, very persuasive. Uh, you just lean back here and rest a minute now. Thank you. He cooks good, too. Cooks? With the Gil Favor drive. I'm G.W. Wishbone, and that tower of wisdom is my cook's louse, Mushy. My name's Bateman. Pleasure to make your acquaintance, Mr. Bateman. Gill Favor Drive. That wouldn't be the cows that we kept here in all day yesterday. Well, more than likely. We're camped up on the James about four miles. Uh, we just been into the domes to pick up some rock salt. Is it a big herd? Well, 3,200 head and 25 drovers. 25? <laughs> Take that thing off. They scare you? Boy, Mr. Bateman, this is a good one. Do you think a, a nine-year-old would like that? Bound to. That nine-year-old liked it. I bought all these things back in El Paso. You know, they, those masks and trains and drums. That's why I left the wagon. I didn't want the boy to see me wrapping the toys. You know, and then I wanted to try on the costume. But I don't know, I got kind of turned around. I, well, you're kind of rushing the season. You got a good four months till Christmas. I have, yes. Well, what then? Uh, you mean someone else hasn't? The little fella, huh? The boy don't know it. 
We just told him that Santa Claus sometimes drops in early on good boys, you know. Oh, we're going to have a Christmas party to tomorrow or maybe a day later. You know, we're going to put up a Christmas tree and we'll, we'll hand out the, the presents, you know. That it, it'll only be the three of us, of course. <laughs> We found a boy in, in, in Mexico, Danny. No last name, no parents, you see. Mag and me, we, we never had any children, so we, we just kind of all got together. Was he all right then? Well, he, he seemed to be, except for a little cough. You know, we took him to the doctor. The doctor said maybe six months. Or seven. That was in January. Oh, well, the doctors can make mistakes, too. No, no, not this time. Not this time, Mr. Wishbone, no. Well, I guess I'll take off these clothes. Now, that's north, you say? Oh, well, we'll drive you back, Mr. Bateman. Oh, no, no, that... You don't have to do that. I, I know my way now. Well, the truth of the matter is, I'd kind of like to meet the family. You would? Well, I'd, I'd be very proud to have you meet him. It wouldn't make the little fellow nervous. Oh, no. No, I, I think it'll perk him up. You see, Mr. Wishbone, it gets very dull just lying in bed and staring up at the sky. Yeah. Ron, Mag. I bet you. <laughs> Ten years ago, you wouldn't have. Ten years ago, I wouldn't be here for a year yet. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> oh, Danny. Where were you ten years ago? Alaska. With Bateman? Always with Bateman. Now, can you imagine me without Bateman? What was he doing in Alaska? Selling lots in the Gobi Desert to the Eskimos. Bateman's going to teach me the business. When I grow up, we're going to Brooklyn. He says they're building a fine bridge down there. He's going to teach me how to sell it. Ah, Bateman's a genius with bridges. Once in 43, I remember Bateman sold the London Bridge twice in the same week to the same Scotsman. Will I be that good someday? <laughs> well, that depends upon what you really want. Wouldn't you rather go to school? Maybe learn a trade? Own a house? Did Bateman ever do those things? No. I want to be like Bateman. That's what Bateman wants, too. That's what he's always wanted, a boy to be just like him. That's one thing I was never able to give. Why not? Oh, maybe because we were waiting for a special boy to sit down by us in a park in Mexico. So you could play the Christmas game? No. So we could have somebody to love. Don't you like the Christmas game? Not much. But Bateman says we're going to earn a lot of money. And people's going to give us presents. I know, I know. Hello! Hello! That's them. Off you go. And you remember what Bateman told you now? Stay in bed, look frail. Show me. You're not supposed to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Mag. She goes all to pieces. Bateman. Ah, oh, Bateman, I thought the Red Indians had got you. Oh, no. no, you can't lose the bad penny. <laughs> These men saved me. As 
Is the boy awake? Waiting for you. Danny? Hello, Bateman. How do you feel? Good. That's my boy. Well, he don't look too bad, does he? Well, he's probably thinking of the Christmas party. You know, that, that livens him up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, uh, you'll stay for lunch, won't you? Mag? No, we can't. No, they're expecting us back, but well, thanks a lot anyway. Mr. Bateman. Sir? Uh, you gotta let us help. Help? The boy, the party. I know you'd like to keep it private, but it isn't fair. Not to the boy. Now, there's 25 drovers up there on the James who just turned themselves inside out for that youngster. Please, Mr. Bateman. Uh, we'd give him a party he'd remember the rest of us. I mean, well, I got just the right present for him. What do you say, ma'am? Well, you know, I think it would do the boy good, Mag. It's only four miles away. He could travel that far. Then it's all settled. Now, I'll go on ahead. You just bundle him up and bring him out and let him get acquainted. Now, you just follow my tracks north. <laughs> No, no. Well, everything turned out fine, didn't it? We ought to do real well with this one, Mag. Real well? What's the matter? Nothing. Mag, tell me. Well, did it have to be a Christmas game? Well, of course. Christmas is special to people. A man would have to be made out of rock not to give something away on Christmas. Well, Christmas is special to me also. Isn't it to you? But this really isn't Christmas. <laughs> Mag, you've never gotten syrupy over something like this before. Why, you know we've made some of our biggest hauls on holidays. People are softer then. I guess it's because the boy's with us now. A Christmas ought to mean something to him, shouldn't it? Not a joke or a game. It should bring a family closer together. But there's no family closer than us. And do you think that boy isn't going to be happy getting all those presents? Oh, I didn't think cowboys had anything much to give anyway. Well, they have cows. I could tell them that we would take the boy to New York to see a specialist if we only had the money. Mag, I'll bet we would get away from there with 20 or 30 head of cattle. And then later on, when the boys had more experience, we'll start working in the towns. I'll save the money this time, Mag. Yes. Oh, I know you think I won't, but things are different now. I have a son. You know what he said today? He said, I want to be just like Bateman when I grow up. Did he really say that? The very words. <laughs> Why, he'll be better than I ever was. Why, with the things I'll teach him, I, he'll be the best in the business. And did you ever see anyone quicker to learn, man? Never did. <laughs> I'll show him how to, how to sell and... How to deal. Bateman. Hmm? Do you think that's the right life for him? Why? Wasn't it the right life for you, Mag? Yes, for me. But, Bateman, would you play pirates with me? Bateman! Bateman! There's no such person as Bateman. My name is Captain Kidd! And 
Aye, there's work to be done, mate. I hear there's treasure to find on the James. <laughs> Go on, get in there. <laughs> He running. Yeah, he runs pretty fast down the middle. Strong for the beads? Go and knock him over. You be sure and get him across by sundown. If it rains, he'll be stuck here good. Right. Clay, how long you figure you and me will be gone? Well, if you've got the time, I'd like to show you the whole shortcut. Take a day or two. All right, once you're across, you keep moving, whether we're back or not. Check. Hey, Seuss. Hey, Seuss. Hey, senor boss. What are you mooning about? Que magnifico. Verdad? That's a wild star, and you'll never get a saddle on, Jesus. I know, but I can look and dream. As long as you wake up by the time that Remuda hits that water. I will, Senor Favor. And take him across, two at a time, slow and easy. And just remember... Hey, relax, will you? We're gonna make out all right. I just don't want the herd stuck here. There ain't enough grass to last him if that river floods. You ain't gonna get stuck here. It's a matter, don't you trust me? Play, let's go. Quince? Yeah. Wait, my hand. So you must have ever get away, all right? Yeah, fretting every inch of the way. Better get the men on their feet. We're gonna move out the herd. Right now? Yeah, now's as good a time as any, isn't it? Here's the boy. Hello. Put the salt in supply away. Yes, sir. In creation, you've been. I thought you got tied up with the widow woman or something. Yeah, we got delayed. Hold it right there. Uh, no use getting down and unhitched. We're moving them over. Over where? Across the river. Oh, no, we're not. We can't. What do you mean we can't? Because I invited a guest for supper. Well, that's swell. You can feed him supper on the other side of the river. Well, I'm not sure he can make it across the river. But I'm mighty well sure that he shouldn't be breathing dust in his lungs. Well, just who in the world is this guest? Well, it's a nine-year-old boy, and he's dying. Dying? I tried dying. We run into this fellow Bateman coming back from the domes. It's his boy. He and his wife were getting ready to throw him a Christmas party tomorrow or the next day. So we ask him over here. Now, well, I can understand how you feel, Wish, but... But what? We can't hold up the whole herd just because you want to throw a party. Why not? It's his last Christmas. Don't you like kids? Look, that's got nothing to do with it. Mr. Favor wants his herd moved out. There's, there's no grass left around here. Well, the herd isn't all going to drop in just one day. Yeah, if it starts raining or floods or something, we're going to be in trouble. Rain? In August? It can't rain. Look, I don't want to argue about it anymore. I want this herd moved out right now. So get it moving. Howdy. Howdy. Thank you for inviting me to your Christmas party. Uh, one thing about a Bronx, he wants to think that you know what you're doing at all times, so don't be pussyfooting around with him. Now you be the boss. Now let's see if Randy here to live. Hey, that's hey. fine. That's mighty fine. Mr. Queen, how long does it take to be a cowboy? Oh, it takes a mighty long. Oh, no, it don't take long, son. You're a cowboy already, Danny. You're in a cattle camp. You're riding a horse. Yeah. Let's go gallop him. Oh, now, hold up, son. Well, sir, let's just bring him here at the right, huh? That's fine. Now you got it. Yeah. Show you how to play mumbly peg? Oh, let me show him. You're liable to cut his foot or something. Here, now hold on here. Maybe he's had enough excitement for one day. I don't feel tired, Bateman. Oh, now look here, just a minute. I would, I would rather that he didn't overdo. You know, he's not as strong as he looks. Hey, now you hear that? Now move on out, all of you. Come on. Excuse me. 
Excuse me. I was going to wait to give this to Danny later, but... Well... He's a very lucky fellow, St. Nicholas. And I thought, maybe he'd be lucky for you too. Make you feel a little better. So... See this smile? He's always happy because he is the patron saint of children. The first Santa Claus. He does other things too. Protects travelers. Protects poor cowboys from being robbed. Muchísimas gracias, señor. Por nada, chico. Buena suerte. What was that last thing he said? I mean, that, that very last thing. Good luck. They think I'm really sick. <laughs> That's part of the game. Yes. <laughs> All part of the game. Well, I guess I'd better circulate around a little, you know, and give them suggestions for presents. <laughs> oh, uh, Danny, when I come back, would you like to play pirate? All right. All right. <laughs> Uh, Bateman? Yes? Uh, instead of pirates, can we play Trail Drover? Trail Drover? Well, if, if that's what you want, yes. Yeah. Senor, <laughs> never have I seen a horse to compare. Never. Why don't you go after that? I couldn't, senor. Oh, too fast. Too fast, too free, too dangerous. Those hooves could cut a man to pieces. Still, they could make a man rich. Is that so? Oh, yes. A breed of fine racing horses would pay plenty for a stallion like that, if he could be caught. But me, I'm not a gambler. Steers may be ugly and stupid, but at least they can be driven to market and they bring a good price. For the owners, yes. <laughs> These are brush cattle, senor. In this case, we are the owners. We each have a certain number of beefs and a stake in the race. Is that right? You know, that's funny, Jesus. Stanley and I were talking about it. He wanted to know if I knew how the herd was divided, you know. Oh, there's <laughs> a fine boy, that Danny. Yes. I feel very sorry for you and your wife. Oh, well, it's, it's not... All black, hey, Sue. <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, no. No, not yet, no. You see, there's a doctor in New York. He's a specialist, you know. He, and uh, he specializes only in cases like Danny's. Oh, takes money to go to New York. Yes, and, 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 and I'm not a cattle owner, huh? <laughs> well, that's true, yeah. Oh, uh, Senor Bateman. Mm -hmm. uh, it's funny, but I, I just got an idea. I don't know where it came from. Mm -hmm. uh, suppose each of us give one steer to Danny for a Christmas present. Twenty-five? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, That's out of the question. No, no, no. Oh, but, you. Senor. No, no, we couldn't let you do that. No, no, no. Not even to save the boy's life. No. Well, hey, Seuss, you, you kind of put me in a... Very, it's almost an impossible position here. I, I'm a little embarrassed, you know. I really, I'll, I'll think about it. Hey, Sus, just... Mm. Hey, Sus, what is going on? Oh, Senor McCann. Come here, I will tell you something. There is a doctor in New York who can kill them. Mag, the ball is rolling. I've got a sneaky hunch that we are about to become cattle owners. Good. Danny? He ain't there. He went for a walk. For a walk? He wanted to go down by the river. I said he could, if he walked slow and maybe limped a little. Why should he limp? He's supposed to have weak lungs. I can't 
can't remember every tiny detail. Besides, I had a headache. And anyway, I... All right, all right, Mag. All right, all right. I'll find him. <laughs> Bateman, let him have his head a little. You keep hemming him in and he'll really get sick. <laughs> so you gotta use a little more of a flick of the wrist, Dan. Just, uh, just give a little flick and it goes right over here. Hold your rope right down here, too, like this. I did it! Oh, hello, Mr. Bateman. Bateman, did you see that? Roddy taught me. It's quite an achievement. Well... He probably wouldn't pick it up himself. I just help speed it up a little. Watch. I'll do it again. Well, wait, you, you're even starting wrong there, son. You, you see, when you do this thing, you've got to catch it like this. Now, when you throw it, of course, it goes... <laughs> well, I haven't got time to go through the thing right now. So you look a little tired. Now, go ahead. Go back to the wagon. Bateman, can I stay a little longer? No, you can't. No. You need your rest. Yeah. You better do what he says, kid. All right. Bateman, when I grow up, can I be a cowboy like Rowdy? Go on. Go on. Kind of makes you wonder what life's all about. Fine boy like that getting sick. Oh, it just happens. Hasn't there been anything you could do about it, Mr. Bateman? Not without robbing a bank. <laughs> Or uh, learning to really use a lariat. What do you mean? Oh, well, it was just a crazy notion I had. Tell me, I, maybe I can help you out. Well, I, I saw a wild stallion on the mesa. Yeah? Jesus says that he'd bring a fortune if he could be caught. Yeah. yeah, what do you mean, if? <laughs> oh, well, just forget all about it. Just forget it. Forget it, why? Well, because I've changed my mind, and besides that, it's very dangerous. So just forget it. Sure, maybe the kid dies and I could have saved him, maybe? <laughs> Wait a minute, Mr. Yates. I'll be back before dark, Mr. Bateman, with probably the biggest, meanest-looking Christmas present you ever laid your eyes on. Mr. Yates! Mr. Yates! Storm I ever seen. I told you not to go out or look at you. Well, somebody had to help Jesus with a horse. Or somebody, not a 70 year old fool. Now you get them boots off and dry your feet. How's the boy? He's got little fever. <laughs> That's all I need the both of you to come down with colds. The sea is running high and nasty tonight, I really... Is Rowdy back? No, not yet. Bateman, where do you suppose he went? Mr. Quince was asking... Now, how would I know? Off on some wild goose chase, I suppose. Oh, he'll be all right. Probably sitting under a tree right now, just waiting for the rain to stop. How are you and the, and the good saint uh, hitting it off? Fine. He's a quiet sort of character, ain't he? We talk, son. Oh, do you? <laughs> what about? Dying. About what? Dying. He says somebody's going to die. Where would he ever get a thought like that in his mind? I can't imagine. 
Especially after you're arranging a Christmas party tomorrow night. Oh, well, he knows that's just a game. He's only nine. Maybe he doesn't know. Danny, you understand that this is just a game we're playing. A joke. You aren't really sick. He says it doesn't hurt, Bateman. That's not the point. Bateman, you scare him to death if you yell like that. Oh, all right. Now, we'll, we'll talk it over tomorrow. Go to sleep. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. It just shows she has a good imagination. That'll help him. Help him to lie? To steal? What's got into you lately, Mag? Oh, Bateman. What do you say we retire? After this job? And live on what? Love? <laughs> Mag, when we found Danny, we took on responsibilities. That's exactly what I mean. He isn't like us. Can't you see it? There's something innocent in him. Well, he, he's my son, and whatever I do is for his sake. Sure, Bateman. What's that? It's a coyote. Stop raining. It's time to hunt whatever's helpless. Mr. Yates, get back. Only his horse, without a saddle. I'm afraid something happened to him. I think I know where he is. Yes? He went after the stallion. Dios mio. I must try to find him. Hey, Jesus, I'd be much obliged if you'd lend me a horse. We will go together, senor. What does it mean? I found it lying on the ground. I think Senor Rowdy roped the stallion. Maybe we found the saddle because the wild horse tore it loose. I'm not sure, but I think the stallion shook this loose. I pray to God it did not trample Senor Rowdy down. Hey, Seuss, look. Is that Rowdy's hat? I think so. It is in your Rowdy's heart. It's a coyote. It's dead. Senor Rowdy. Dead? No. He must have waited till the coyote was almost on him before he shot. Maybe Senor Wishbone can do something. I better take him back to the camp. Oh, Senor, there is a town to the west, maybe 15 miles. He will need a doctor. I'll find one. Flooded. 
It flooded. When did you, when did you get back? About ten minutes ago. Oh, sorry, boss. How is he? Feels like everything in there's busted. Good, good. Rowdy! Oh, hi, Danny. I, I had this wild stallion uh, all roped and caught for you. He, he tore the saddle clean off, got away. Where's Bateman? He has gone for a doctor, senora. Looks like I kind of spoiled the party. No, you're back. Look at the tree. Yeah, Dan, that's a <laughs> humdinger. Just no end to the bright ideas this outfit can come up with. Now, boss, I know how you feel, but it isn't Rowdy's fault we didn't move over. It's more mine. It was my idea to have the party here. For uh, the dying boy. That's right. Tell me, you never hear of the Spanish prisoner, Dodge? Yeah, con game, isn't it? The pigeon drop? Con game. How about um, the dying boy? Mr. Faber, the Batemans are not like that. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Faber, you're all wrong. Why, you're just sore because the herd's stuck here a couple of days. What's more important, a cow or a boy? Besides, what's wrong with Christmas in August? Every man in this crew's feeling better for it. They ought to have Christmas every August. Every month. Oh, there's the doctor. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, I am. To all the fellows, the trail boss, Mr. Favor. He just got back. He doesn't like the idea of the party. I think maybe we're in trouble, Bateman. That hurt? Yep. That hurt too. Yeah, it does. Now move your hand and feet. <laughs> well, your spine's all right. Three or four busted ribs and a few bad bruises, but I guess you'll live. Anything I can do? I'll keep his chest wrapped tight. No riding for a while. Oh, and one thing more, Doctor, while you're here. I wish you'd take a look at our young friend here. Oh, there's no need for that, Doctor. Thank you very much. We should find that it's perfectly all right. Oh, yes, Mr. Bateman. Let the doctor look at him. Boy, who knows? Maybe there's been a miracle. The boy's well now, huh? Well, where can I take him? Mag, it's all right, Danny. I'll be with you. Our tent is over here, Doctor. All right. I just would like to ask. Now you'll see. Yeah, now we'll all see. They're, they're taking quite a while in there, ain't they? Worried, Bateman? Now, Doc. How's the boy? He's sound as a dollar. Just like I said, a miracle. I'd better tell the men the good news. But your wife, Mr. Bateman, your wife... <laughs> what about my wife? Well, she had a dizzy spell. I thought I'd better look her over, too. Well? How long has she complained about these pains in her chest? Oh, she never complains. Mag ain't the complaining type, you know, she... Wait a minute, yes. It started about uh, six or seven months ago. I remember because it was the day before we found Danny. Her left arm been hurting her? Well, some, yeah, when, when she sews, you know. Some must have hurt more than some. Why? Mr. Bateman, I don't know how to tell you this. But your wife is... Well, she has a very bad heart. Well, I'll, I'll see that she takes good care of herself, Doctor. 
I mean, it's extremely serious. How long? Oh, it's hard to tell for sure. Well, a couple of years. Well, months? Well, tell me, one month? Two months? At the most. <laughs> Did you tell her? Of it. <laughs> it was her Christmas party all the time, and, and none of us knew it. Uh, one less Christmas party. Bateman, what? Yes, ma'am. I suppose the doctor told you that Danny was all right. Yeah, he told us. Are you going to send us all to jail? No need to. No harm done. Well, that's very kind, Mr. Favor. Oh, that's very kind. We'll leave right now. Oh, uh, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Favor. Uh, about the party. Oh, I forget that. Well, the men, uh, men have been looking forward to it. They could use a break. Look, why don't you go ahead with it for their sake? Well, all right, if you like. Thank you, Mr. Favor. Thanks. Oh. From Mushy. Oh, don't give him that one first, uh, Santa Claus. There ain't nothing. Wonder what it is. Ooh. It ain't nothing. Anybody can take him apart. Show me, Mushy. Well. Mr. Favor, this is the most wonderful Christmas I've ever had. I'm glad, ma'am. But I'm worried about all your steers caught over here. Oh, if we need to, we'll, we'll bring feed into them. Don't you worry about it. I want to thank you again. Here's another present for Danny. You understand that we won't take the steers that were offered. But if the boy could keep the other presents... Oh, sure. Of course he can. <laughs> Feeling all right, Miss Bateman? Oh, a little tired. I think I'll just lie down for a while. Here's another present for you. Now, that's from Mr. Quince. The... Hey, Susan. Will you take over for me? See si, Santa Claus. This one is from Senor Wishbone. Mag, is everything all right? Everything's perfect. 
great when this is the best Christmas of all. <laughs> oh, what a lucky woman I am. What a wonderful life you've given me. Remember Singapore? Remember Vienna? The Emperor's Ball? You were the loveliest girl then. You were the handsomest man. <laughs> oh, such beautiful years. So exciting. But I still wonder if they'd be right for Danny. They wouldn't. You know, that's right, Mag. You saw right to the heart of the thing. You knew all the time that I wasn't thinking of him, but just of myself. <laughs> Christmas is no time to be selfish, is it? Bateman, are we going to retire? We sure are. <laughs> There's a little town. It isn't far from here. I asked the doctor if he could use an assistant, you know, someone to help around the office, and he said yes. So we'll put Danny in school, and we'll raise him to be a fine man. Thank you. Listen. Merry Christmas, Mary. Merry Christmas. I'm just passing through. Last man snuck up on me like that, drawled back a stump. Well, I just was gonna cool off here in the stream. You got a keenly quiet way of going about it. Um, you live around here? You better tend to your cooling off, mister, and ride on out of here. Uh, see you cleaning off some... fabrics. I didn't see no brands on them. Ought to be able to tell, too, seeing as I can read and do sums. Yeah, well, that ought to come in mighty handy, calling out the branded from the unbranded. Mavericks belongs to who catches them. Sure, this one didn't have a little accident? Maybe he set himself down on a hot brand iron? Raise your hand, stranger. Now, you sashay around there slow-like while I can look on you. And while you're doing that untied iron, Hurry up, drop it on the ground. Look, uh, can I just hand it to you? It's kind of dirty down in there. Oh. Kiki wood. Go ahead. Do like my brother told you. And you drop that iron. I don't care if it gets my dirty. Now you pick him up. Fetch his horse.
This way. Might you be? Name's Roddy Yates. I'm a prospector. Look more like a drover. Got a herd somewhere close by? No, no, I'm just uh, on the trail. I'm way up to Montana. Got a. I hear there's a lot of gold up in that area. Never put much truck in what's below ground. Like what's on top better. Why'd you whoop my boy? Well, he thought I was getting a little curious about a hide to. One of your people was dressing down. Strays. Mavericks and strays. Like you, Prospector, we live off in the fat of the land. Just poor, simple, rawhider folks, taking what the Lord sees fit to render. Yeah. Well, it's all the same. I'll, uh, I'll be getting on back. Back? You got somewhere to go back to? Back to the trail, to Montana. It's kind of a long ride. The book say you ain't give satisfaction yet. Book? Our book. Been living by it for 25, 30 years. Regular law don't work for us. So we lives by the book. It tells us how to act. Now, one thing it say to us is, we got to protect our own. Now, you done hurt one of us, so you got to answer for it. Look, all I did was... Look, don't allow no apologizing. Now? Now. Brock! Get you in the belly! Mr. Yates. Yeah, well, I ain't gonna take your man's life for no lousy book. And you giving him his life? That's right, with my compliments. You hear that, boy? The man done give you your life. Now, according to the book, you gotta give him something back, only more valuable. Well, all that guts my rifle. Gonna have to do better than that. I ain't got nothing else. You got Valley Rose. I done give her to you. But we's intended. Yeah. You got an obligation first. The book says so. Look, he ain't gonna give me nothing. That includes a woman. The book's a book. Now get to it, boy. Take her. We're even now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't go around giving away people. I don't even know her. Know her now. Her name's Valley Rose. Woman, throw another chunk in this pot here. Right after evening vittles, we's gonna have us a wedding.
gotten to our uh, whiskey on, Mr. Riggs. Well, it is <clears throat> kind of unusual. Well, I guess we're about ready. <laughs> well, you... You're liable to get somebody hurt. Here. You might as well take this. Ain't no sense in a man going to his own wedding half naked. Put it on. You'll feel more comfortable. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. You never had a prospector in the family before. I reckon you travel around quite a far distance. Yeah. Yeah, not far enough, really. Seen any uh, interesting sights lately? Like uh, maybe a big herd? Something like that? No. Well, yeah, yeah, I did see a herd about, um, about two weeks ago, way, way south of here. Pretty big herd, was it? Well, a fair. It must have had a thousand head at the outside. Ooh, a thousand head. It's a right smart sum. Well, four or five heads, most weed he's ever had at one time. Will you hash up? Can't you see your displeasure in my visit with Mr. Yates here? Thousand head. That is a right smart sum. Shame they so far away, we'd never get there, what with the wagons and the women and all. Yeah. Yeah. Look, Mr. Quaid, uh, why don't we, why don't we, uh, turn this, uh, wedding into a real celebration? Now, I got an idea. What would that be? Well, if uh, maybe I went out and scouted around, found a herd that's closer than this one. See, I know this country around here pretty well. I could pick off a few strays and bring them back here. We'd have enough for a feast for everybody. Yeah. That's a right fetching idea. Seeing as how we haven't had a chance to look around much. Look, it would only take me a day or two at the outside. Sure would admire to sink my teeth in a fresh brisket. But we're forgetting one thing. We done promised Valley Rose a wedding. Oh, she wouldn't mind waiting a mite. <laughs> promise is a promise, boy. Ain't booked to go back on word. So I guess we'll just have to have the wedding first. Then we'll consider your idea more fully, Mr. Yates. You uh, gonna go to your own wedding in that condition? Huh? Well, a groom usually gets himself all slickered up. Why don't you go on down there at the creek and get some of that dirt off of you? Yeah, yeah, I could uh, stand a little cleaning up. I'll just go right with Sit down! You got chores in camp. Yeah. Better uh, dust off your horse, too. Well, I was... Yeah. Women are persnickety about them little things. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rest easy with them arms! Man, got a right to clean up for his own wedding? Sure has. Right, well, I'll, uh, I'll go on down there, and then I'll be back in a little bit. Be back in a little bit, fellas. Flush. Daddy! That's just what I want him to do. What? You ever see a prospector with shafts tied on his saddle? Man uses the shafts to brush pop a herd, not dig gold. Now you two boys get your horses saddled. I figure our prospector friend's got a herd somewhere close by.
valley goes north, eight or nine miles, then bends west. After the bend, there's plenty of water. What about the lake? Lake. Well, spot some raw hiders. Far in. Raw hiders! Onto this herd, we can write off at least a hundred head. Yeah, well, they seem to be pretty well dug in right where they were. Dug in? Since when is a raw hider ever dug in? And they always sneaking around looking for a stampede or starting one themselves. Stripping the hides or strays and leaving the carcasses to rot those dirty. Oh, you did. Pardon? They didn't spot you. Did they? <clears throat> well, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, I had supper with him last night. You what? Well, you see, uh, you were a little insistent about the whole thing. Oh, well, I don't doubt it. You being such a big, lovable, sociable type. What in the earth are you doing back here? You want to point out the herd to him? I didn't come straight back here. They'd have a real rough time tracking me in here. Oh, that's a big comfort. Not a thing in the world to worry about. Except a rawhider can track a mountain goat through a cloud bank blindfolded. Why me? All right, well, head them straight east, bypass the lake. Just in case your friends don't stay <laughs> dug in. Son, I gained a herd. Ooh, that herd's a mite closer than he figured. Yeah. The Lord don't take kindly to them that don't share. We still have to give him Valley Rose? He doesn't turn her down once. You know what the book says. Well, if he don't want her, you know, and the herd's inside. Are you trying to displeasure me, boy? That girl's worth a lot of hides, does. You ride on back to camp, get the rest of the men, and tell them to bring their irons. Fetch Valley Rose. Tell her to bring that wooden dress of hers. But, Daddy... You hear me, boy? Hey, Daddy. What if Brock was right? What if that fella don't want her? Well, I reckon to protect our honor. We just have to kill him dead. Sure, a lot of cows. Enjoy what there is, cause no telling when another cow will keel over, and Mr. Favor won't let me stop to string one up. You mean you didn't slaughter this? It just keeled over and bellied up. Maybe it was sick. It don't taste like anything serious to me. The steer took it mighty serious. Ah. Hey, Jeff. Company. John Wesley Quaid. These are my boys. This is Coley. This here's Brock. My name's Favor. What you want? Well, that's right neighbor over here to ask. 
Uh, we just come over to finish up a little ceremony that got interrupted in our camp last night. Ceremony? What kind of ceremony? Wedding. Of course, the groom turned up a mite shy. That's him there, Mr. Yates. Oh, a little something that slipped your mind, huh? Well, look, can I help it if they want me to marry her just because they gave her to me? They gave it to you, you. That's right. Brock here, he done give Mr. Yates Valley Rose as a present. You see, they had a mite of a spat before they became friends, so the only honorable thing to do was to exchange gifts. Uh, look at her, Mr. Yates. She stands quiet, built firm, won't give you the least bit of trouble. I'll bet if you scraped a couple of layers of that prairie off of her, she might turn out to be right handsome. Yeah, now look, as far as I'm concerned, there ain't gonna be no wedding. Not with me in it, anyway. Put the gun down, Coley. You, uh, pressing our honorable intentions? I'll get married in my own time, my own choosing. I ain't gonna have no marriage ramrodded down my throat, I'll tell you that. Book says you got an obligation. Yeah, all well, the book's wrong. Mr. Yates, we ain't got much except honor. In fact, honor is about all we do got. That's why we prize it so keenly high. Have a little. The turning down of a gift is about the worst offense in the book. Looks like we're gonna have to shoot you dead, Mr. Yates. Well, that might take some doing, fella. I know it ain't much, but we kinda used to them. All 25 of them. Coley, huh? give me that silver dollar you've been a saving. What for? Just do as your daddy tells you. Now you two put your good eye on this and watch. One shooting low again, Daddy. Darn near got off the outside edge. Well, so he did. Gonna have to talk to that boy about that front side of his. Of course, can't expect him to shoot as good as cousin number two up there. He's been known to shoot the eye out of a squirrel from half a mile. Where was we? Daddy, go on ask him. Ask him what? Well, don't the book say there's other honorable ways of fixing an A-front? Well, the book ain't really too clear on that. Well, say there's a, uh, like to offer us a, um, three or four hundred head. Wouldn't that kind of ape tone? I don't rightly know. Well, what do you think? Thank Don't you. forget I use the word. All right, since it's you, I'll let you have three, four hundred head of cattle. Ten dollars a head. Me? No, wait a minute. You know, I ain't got that kind of money. That settles that, then. Just, just a minute. You don't think I'm going to marry her. Either get married or get buried. You accommodate these gentlemen. Gentlemen, or they're gonna start shooting. Now, you know I got a fond feeling for you, but I got a fond feeling for me, too. The rest of the boys and 3,000 head of cattle. Now, I'm sorry, but you lose. I'm kind of hoping you, you'll understand this for somebody has to get killed. Oh, the boy is drowning, and you throw him an anchor. Yeah, boy, that's just great. Nothing like having the rest of the boys to watch out for. Huh. Uh, 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 now, hold on. I, uh, been recollecting the book, and, uh, well, I got to thinking that maybe, uh, Valley Rose's hurt ain't as big as we thought. Now, uh, 
if I was to hear the mention of maybe uh, 200 head, I might be able to use my fatherly advice on her. Well, um, you heard Mr. Yates is mighty short on property. Besides, we ain't got a preacher. Oh, I take care of the religious freight for my kin. Valley Rose, get on over there and take a hold of your groom's hand. You got it? Yeah. Dearly beholden, we're gathered here to join these two youngins in holy wedlock, and we's a going. All right, hold it. Change my mind about the 200 heads. Oh, no, oh, it's just that, uh. This is a pretty big occasion for these young folks, especially for the woman. The woman takes a marriage serious. Since it's a big event, let's make it a big one. We can clean up the camp, spread out a few flowers, fix up some seats. A uh, waste of time. Taint neither. No, it ain't. Well, uh, I guess since it is such a proud occasion, we might do with a bit of beautifying. Well, then it's settled. Maybe you'd better leave the girl with us. She could use a bit of fixing up, too. We'd do our own fixing. Oh, you. You got any soap? You even got a comb? Well, he... He's, he's got you there. Oh, Valley Rose, uh, you run along with them and get ready to put on your marrying up dress. Any particular thing you'd like me to get fixed up with? Like sackcloth and ashes, huh? All right. Matter of fact, you make a lovely bridegroom, just as you are. Thanks. Uh, we wouldn't take kindly to him kiting off now the minute our back is turned. Fact is, our cousins up there on the hill would just get purely distempered. Oh, Mr. Quaid, I'm absolutely certain the groom had no intentions of upsetting your plans. I ain't gonna have you putting her aside again. I'll tell you what. Why don't you come along and keep an eye on him? Uh, you do that, boy. And if he tries to make a break for it, you just shoot him anytime you want. What? Now, look, you could all stay and help with the fixings you want. No, no, we... We like to stay out in the open. Valley Rose, I'll throw down your ghost at you. We'll be back along about sundown. All right, be looking for you. All right. Get to fix it. Get that rifle out of my gut. Stick the barrel down your throat and kick the stock off. Maybe I missed something, but if this is a joke, where'd I miss it? It wouldn't strike you as a joke, Wish. Well, this one sure looks like one. All it needs is a shotgun. Uh, a couple of long-barreled uh, squirrel guns. Well, what are we gonna do? Get set for a wedding, of course. One little slice, that's all it would take. Look, Brock, you want her, not me. Now, there's got to be some way we can work this out so that we'll both be happy. I see the way she looked on you when you rode into camp. Your felt hat and your leather boots and all your store boughts. You can give her lots more things than I could. You two are intended. How about the way she looks on you? That don't make no difference. She's your now. You can talk to your daddy. You can tell him that you want her back. Take book. Book? Have you ever seen this book? You ever read it? I can't read. Besides, Pappy, he lost the book before I grew up. Yeah. I'll bet he lost it. There probably never was any book. 
He just uses that to get you people to do what he wants. Don't make no difference if it's a book you can see. It's a book we live by. It works. It works, because he wants it to work, that's why. How come there's no other young people with your group? Well, they grew up and lit out. Yeah, they lit out because they got smart, that's why. When they could fend for themselves, they realize there's a better life than scavenging. I ain't sure about that. You ever notice a horse shy away from a rope when you show it to him? Yeah. Well, that's because that rope was used to make him mine when he was a colt. It was either cinched around his neck or else doubled over and laid over his rump. Now, that horse, when he grows up, all you got to do is show that rope to him and he'll shy away. What I'm trying to say is that if a horse had a brain, he wouldn't let any human being bluff him. I don't know about that. Hiding's my business. Get on with your fixing up. Oh, boy. Run right in back of you. How do you know which way I'm facing? Where's Mr. Yates? He's getting himself slicked up. Brock with him? You mean the fellow that tickled him with a rifle? Yeah. How's he look? Down in the mouth, both of them. Here. What's that? It's your wedding dress. I patched up some of the holes. Just fine and dandy. Now all we gotta do is fumigate the whole camp. <laughs> They're jumping already. Mushy, get me a shovel! Miss Favor, that you? Yeah. I reckon you're busy with the fixing and all. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Now look, we're doing the best we can. I'm afraid you're gonna have to be satisfied with that. I know that, Mr. Favor. And I am, as much as I could be. It's just that I ain't ever had nobody interested in being real kin to me before. Worrying about my feelings and like that. I don't even know where my real kin is. Of course, Daddy Quaid takes over the burden of that now, but... Well, it ain't the same as what you did. Uh, speaking up about a, a, a proper wedding and all. Oh, thanks, but I'm, uh, I'm afraid you give me a lot more credit than I'm due. Mr. Fave, I guess what I'm trying to say is... Well, if I were choosing kin of my own, I'd choose you. them drovers, there must have been 20, 25 of them. Well, there's more of us than them. They ain't good odds, I calculate. Brains is king, boy. That's why I'm boss. Yeah. Well, for a while, it looked there like Brock was. Nah, he's just trying to show off for Valley Rose. Oh, me, no, never mind. We'll get our eyes. How? What are you gonna do if that fella does marry up with Valley Rose? You can't shoot kid, folks. The book says so. Well, been thinking on that. Did you notice how them cows was a hooking and a kicking at each other? Yeah, I noticed that. Well, that means they're gonna spook easy. Now then, if we do get us a wedding, well, it's only natural we's gonna have a chivalry. So he's going to tote a keg down there and give them drovers whiskey till they hatches a float. 
Then, long towards the middle of the night, my boy Coley here, he's, he's gonna ride out in the back of that herd, and cut loose with his arm and stampede them cows all over creation. Ah, doggies! Now then, when them drovers rides out to turn that herd, well, us being kin, naturally, we's gonna ride out and help them. But they's gonna be shooting high. And us, we gonna be shooting a might low. Then we gonna disappear. And come morning, there's gonna be dead cows strung from here to thar. Well, how many, Daddy? Oh, I figure maybe 400 dead. 400 hides? Yeah. Well, we can get lots of pretty to store with that many. Boy, you got a plum mean streak in you. No respect for your old daddy. Half of them hides is gonna go for birdies. The rest of them belong to me personal. You know what the book say. The Lord renders wages to them that helps others. I said, wildflowers, not stinkweed. Now get going. And... Wouldn't be too bad an idea if you was to fall in that creek, too. Now move. Now stay away from that coffee pot. I got a collar boiling in that. Bad enough as it was. Take care of the seating arrangements. Come in. I uh, think it's about time you two boys uh, took a ride, ain't it? Yes, sir. I think it is. How many men we got on the herd? Oh, eight. The rest of them's helping wish, like you said. I better put six more on. I got a feeling the herd might start getting jumpy. Well, that's going to make our part of the wind. The tenant's kind of lean, ain't it? How are you going to explain it? Well, I guess I'll have to just up and uh, tell a lie, huh? Finger. Then keep it off in the whiskey or getting it all riled up. That's for the drovers. Now, Lukey, move it in there under the wagon so the shade will cool it off. Let it settle down a mite. You heard, Daddy Quaid. Take your fingers off. How's it going down there, Coley? Still getting ready for that wedding. We got that cab down there cleaning the wood floor. Nobody rode out to outflank us? Uh, just a few of them going back and forth down there from the herd to the camp. It's plumb peaceful. I could have swore they was setting us up for something. You keep your eyes peeled, boy. When the creek bottom's soft, you gotta watch your step. Look out for quicksand. Don't you forget that. All that trouble they're going to, they must be going through with it. So are we, boy. <laughs> So are we. Everything all right, Miss Rose? Just standing around gawking. There's 
customs to a wedding, you know. There's something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Who's got something old? This here's the first tooth I ever lost, ma'am. I guess it's pretty old. Oh, you wanted to give her something old. Why didn't you just give her one of your old socks? Here's a plug of chewing tobacco. It's new, because it ain't never been used. The least you could have done was wrap it up. This uh, peoneta belonged to my sister. For you, something to borrow. See, here's something I picked up in Abilene. Well, it's just a little old hanky, but it is blue. The only soft thing I ever had was some moccasins. Chewed rawhide with long teeth for two months to get them that way, too. I lost my own comb a long time ago. When my hair gets naughty, I just cut it off with a knife that Brock hammered out in a horseshoe for me. He's real good at making things, Brock is. He strung me up a, a necklace once made out of real deer teeth. I had to throw it away, though, because Daddy Quaid said it was again the book. Brock really likes plug. I don't suppose it'd be fitting to give it to him afterwards. Seems as he ain't the one that's marrying me. That's her. Prettier than a mountain flower. She'll make you a good and proper wife. She reads and does sums. You best be good to her. I'll come look for you. I mean it. Now get. Changing the watch on the herd. Relief men should be filing in during the next half hour. Say, you seem to be a mite shy yourself. Was that other boy of yours, uh... Coley. Coley. Well, he done got the poor leaves. We had to leave him in camp. Uh, brought along a keg. Thought maybe your men might like some rut whiskey for the chivalry. I wouldn't be a mite surprised. Uh, boys! Well, you got it fixed up nice for the wedding. Hey, oh, one of my men plays a harmonica. Uh, Lukey, get your mouth limbered up. Please, too, Daddy Quaid. Uh, seeing as you're all family, I know, of course, that uh, you'll be wanting to sit right down front, wouldn't you? No, no. Uh, my men, they don't like to have anybody in behind them. Uh, so if it's all the same to you, they'll just kind of sit and stand around in the back. All right. Suit yourself. Boys, down front. Fellers. Well, I guess we've had about enough 
music, my own invented. Wish. that all men is created equal. I do hate to keep interrupting the ceremony like this, but if I could say just one little thing more. Why, sure, you just go ahead and sing out. Like, uh, no! Found this one out behind the herd, Mr. Favor. Had to convince him to join us. Matching set of holes on each side of that grin. Drop it. Shoot him, cousins! Now you may have to wait a while for that, cuz. Come on, Brock. Give up the gun. No. What you mean, no? No, I. I ain't gonna give this rifle back until this man knows I'm giving him a present. Now, Brocky, if they take it away from you, that, that's one thing, but you giving them to him, that ain't book. <laughs> Book's just been changed. What do you want me to do with this? Well, I, I thought you might give me something back just as valuable. Maybe even a mite more valuable. You mean like not shoot you? <laughs> no, no. I, I, I had another idea in mind. Yeah, well, I'll tell you. Go ahead with my blessings. <laughs> uh, if, now, if, if it's all right with you, uh, we'll just get on out of here and just leave you all alone. We didn't cause you enough trouble. Uh, we won't bother you again. Brock never gone back on a promise in his whole life. That I can believe, but what about him? I don't figure his opinion means much anymore. <laughs> uh, if you can't bluff a horse, you shouldn't shake a rope in his face. Get up, you miserable old hog. There's gonna be some changes made around here. Quit wallowing around and get! No, 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 don't kick your old daddy boy. You're gonna give him the misery. Yeah. yeah. Give him a gift, Brock. He sassed you. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. What do we do with these two, Mr. Favor? No, they're missing out on all the fun. Let them go. That's what I call a real close-knit family. Yeah, it's just like you fellas. All real close-knit family. Oh, now, Roddy, you know we couldn't tell you. Why not? Well, uh, it's that face of yours. 
Well, I mean, it uh, ain't exactly a poker face, you know. Rowdy, it was just like the time you hit that inside straight. Your face was pure D cash register. No need to get sore, Rowdy. Tell you what, just to make up, when we get to Denver, I promise not to shoot you if you'll give me that little waitress you got stashed away. Now, hold on, Rowdy. I was only joking. Do you ever know how awful a tetchy a bridegroom gets on his wedding day? 